called a meeting to order, but we need to <coughs> kind of process things at least before Trevor gets back down here. Um, first up is public comment. This is anything that's not on the agenda. None in the room. None online. Approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Consent calendar. This is meeting minutes and warrants. Okay. A motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And we are now at the business part where we need Trevor. So I guess we got through that a little too quick. <laughs> Hey, Alyssa. Hey, Alyssa. Uh, that's all right. We're waiting on Trevor. It's uh, dealing with technology. But we got through the first board items of the agenda before we got <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was the first thing that she asked for. Just because when you have to say it's not on the agenda, there's something else. No, it's not. Okay. No, I'm good. We don't have to pack up. <laughs> <laughs> We're on a roll. <laughs> well, there's a few things on here we can probably do. Um, if we jump down to item B, the assembly permits. Awesome. Did we have anybody with any questions on any of those? I did not have any questions. These are all repeats. Yeah. So it should be this up. It sounds like yeah. Scott signed off on all of them too, right? Yep, he's met with them. Cool. So can we do a motion to approve all three of those in one? Sure. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, let's see what else we can cherry pick off here. <laughs> um, there's a standard PM1 resolution for Salisbury Square. Okay. That we can move. Let's do that. Any questions? Um, None. Entertain a motion to approve. So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, so Trevor, we took care of B and D. <laughs> and we will go back to the grants management policy. We took care of which ones? B. That was a motion by Stephanie and a second by Alyssa, but I thought it did be taking notes, so we did B and D. D? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we are back up to a grant management policy. I just have a quick question. Did did you say you guys adopted the you you approved the VCDB PM one resolution? Yep. And we're going back up to the grants management policy. Um, so do we want to, did everybody review this? Have enough time to digest it? Because I didn't quite get all the way through it, to be honest with you. I thought it was, the one, question I had. Mark, can you hear okay? I can, yes, thank okay. you. Okay. The one thing that wasn't in there that I thought was maybe a possibility we might want to add in is um, adding admin fees into grant processing too um, as a possibility, maybe not a requirement, but for some of the grants that we end up working on, we have cost for us and a lot of those grants will actually reimburse us for that time, then we should take advantage of that so we can keep you on to process grants. Um, I'm trying to even find my copy here. There we go. 
to, um, we actually had a little bit of a conversation about this today, um, to do it as a percentage of the grant when all grants don't require the same amount, or do you do it as minimum amount? And then for the more complex ones, one where you're capturing closer to what your costs are. You know, we've talked about bringing on a position that the grants would fund. So I think you're right, right on that we got to somehow capture back these admin fees. Could we word it, word it like to the allowable expense? extent based on the funding because it's usually set by the funding opportunity mm. the percentage um, so right now we're managing a grant for a private business that it mandated the town had to be the recipient of so should the town only get back that set amount when it's managing it for something that's not really a town's function that's where I'm struggling with it, right? Like, if we can only get two thousand dollars and it costs us ten, but you don't know that going in, should the town be stuck paying that extra eight thousand in that scenario for that grant for a an entity that's not a town function? Right, and then the private that's where business I think is it actually gets like making money off of the grant, and we're spending yeah. money on the grant for a private business, essentially. Yeah, but I don't know how you define it. How do you? <clears throat> put something we, that complex together. Could we do what together. Alyssa said and then like, come back to it in a year and see how it goes? Like, we might find that what you're saying happens infrequently enough that we negotiate we just, it. We Maybe just, we set an amount and save, but open for negotiation depending on the time and yeah. cost commitment. I mean, I was proposing that we just make it what Alyssa said, and that's it. And then if we find after, say, a year that there was that town spent an inordinate amount of time processing private, you know, grants for private organizations, and it really costs us a significant amount of money that we could then go back and come up with a policy to handle that. But maybe it's not that big a problem. Do we have a sense but of I, how, how? I don't think it's just private entities either, right? Like, so if the grant caps it at 8%, and the entity that's doing the project wants a portion of that for their admin, Right, like now the town can't get the full 8% or 6% or 5% or whatever it is. Like how do you... But wouldn't we be more indirect and they would be... Usually admin can still be a direct expense, right? And then we could ch charge the indirect as like the fiscal sponsor. I don't know. I don't know how complex some of them get. I know the ones that we write just say admin limited to x percent yeah it doesn't break it out by who's charging it or or how they do it i just don't know because we have some that we do for entities that are not a for-profit that are pretty complex and take mm -hmm. quite a bit of time yeah. too yeah. and so if you're going to be limited to only a portion of that percentage then how do you right. how do you support a position maybe for indirect we can say like to the you know, highest allowable amount by the funding stream, and then maybe it's in addition to that, an administration cost negotiated based on like See involved. How complex it gets. Yeah. Quick, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, we're, other communities have gone through this, presumably. We're not the first to grapple right. with this. I wonder what other municipalities, how they handle these kinds of cases. So maybe research that and come back with this to adopt next month. Or we can adopt research. and then do an addendum with, with that part. Because who knows how long that a month sounds nice, but maybe it's a maybe month it's long longer. project. Maybe it's a three month <laughs> long project. So do we, but we want something in there, right, for a placeholder? Could we put some wording in there that admin fees are allowable? based on should be recaptured to the maximum extent something big like that <clears throat> to be, ter to be <clears throat> determined by we have to approve the grant before we accept it right so if it said one percent we could be like yeah no yeah or you need to come <laughs> up with some funds <coughs> if it's like a business or something then they need to what if we required in the 
<coughs> approval to apply. Yeah, Tim, just a second. Let me finish this thought, Mark, and then we'll come to you. What if in the application, when we're going to approve the application, there had to be some estimate of the <laughs> admin time that would be required? Right, yeah. Bless you. Bless you. In the town's role. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to give you options for the other <laughs> <laughs> Soft and not so soft. Uh, Mark? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I, I just want to clarify the the policy and procedure document that you're looking at is really about establishing a step, a stated expectation uh, for for the applicants, and then of course a step by step guide. So so there's an equitable uh, process for people to be able to apply. The, uh, the the discussion about establishing fees, which fees the town would be taking uh, for admin, is absolutely important, but it's also going to be relative to if we're able to, if we're working with a third party, the expectation is that the third party will, you know, if it's a smaller grant, will most likely take the vast majority of the admin fees. If it's a bigger one, and it's still being, uh, util it's it's still a third party, um, you know, there would be some, there would be some admin fees that could come back to cover the cost of requisitions and that sort of thing. And of course, if a grant is being managed largely in-house, those admin fees would come to uh, directly to uh, to 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 manage the grants, like for instance the NEP grant. Um, the but the document that you're looking at that you'll be voting on tonight is really set up to be uh, to be a, a stated expectation, a uniform expectation that everybody can see and is transparent, which is a huge win for us to be able to apply for uh, when we're applying for grants through the state and on a federal level because it it shows that we have our our, our uh, organizational structures in place as a town. So I do think it's important to to have the fee structures in place, but I'm not sure that um, I'm not sure that they they belong in this document. In my opinion, that can be um, you know it 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 will be known that the town is going to take admin fees um, as 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 they choose and desire based on the project, but. Um, the reason why we didn't put it in was because, and correct me if I'm wrong, Trevor, but the uh, looking at it from the policy and procedure standpoint, um, uh, it wasn't, we, we just didn't see it as being an important part. Um, not that it's not important, but it's a separate conversation. This is the admin fee piece? Correct. Yeah, I, I mean, we've talked, there have been a few different versions, and I forget how many we ended up with eventually with you. Eight, nine, ten, something like that. Ten, I think. Yeah. yeah. And so we've talked. It's been in. It's been out. It's been in. It's been out. And I think the idea, long term, at a minimum, especially once we get sort of practice at this, and we can better estimate, we know what the grant loads are. We should be recouping what we have um, into the game, so to speak. So there's a step in here that says the grant compliance team will ensure resources are available to manage the grant effectively through completion. But so how do you do that if you don't understand? what the cost is and the labor demands. It just feels like the two go hand in hand, but. I think there should be at least some language in here that it's gonna be, that it's clear that we could ask for that admin fee. Maybe, maybe once in a while we would have something come through that's so minimal. I would think if when you're evaluating whether to apply or not, you knew this is the demand on the town, this is the admin fee available, yep. you can then have that. That should be part of the decision making. Yeah. Because if there's no admin fee available, which is it actually in there in some grants, but the time demand is high, we probably ought to know that in advance before we get committed to some of these situations that we then are like, why do we do that? Yeah. Would the select board consider approving the document and then and then filing an amendment to include the um, the fees associated the process of establishing uh, you know how to determine you know the, the fee structure um, because I, I just think it's going to be so different with the, with so many grants it's gonna it'll have to be a very broad statement uh, because there's just there's so many different size grants and uh, so if if it's worth 
you know, from my perspective, this allows us to sort of get the ball rolling and the momentum moving for the process uh, of trying to, you know, trying to get this out to the public. Um, and then it's my understanding that amendment would be relatively easy, but I could be wrong. What is, um, just, let me just look at this form. One of the things we talked about while you're looking was also just, um, making sure we developed good systems to track that time, to quantify that time, both mm -hmm. on the estimate on the front end and then throughout the implementation phase. And that's kind of a missing link. So you, you kind of capture it in the uh, application checklist, Mark, where it talks about um, additional costs to the town and what the, what the demand will be on the town. It may just be another box on this application checklist that says admin, admin fees available to the town to manage the grant. It could be that simple. But the that's a that's another level of, level of due diligence that the applicant may not have full access to when they're applying to see if it's if it's a grant that we're going to allow them to actually fall through and apply on. That's the only. It, I'm not sure that that information could be. It's usually in the NOFA. Really available at that stage. <clears throat> it should be. It's in the NOFA. Okay. Yeah. Trini. Yep. When, I'm thinking maybe just if we had a statement that said the administration fees will be considered as part of the um, decision process, and it might even fit in that paragraph that you read earlier, where when um, the grant committee assesses a grant, that that's part that the. the it will be part of the decision process. We just won't define it at this point because it's going to be so different from grant to grant. But at least it's there. But they could put it, and then they could put it on the detail right, checklist. Right, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we would then know kind of this is what the town's role has to be. Mm -hmm. This is what's available to help fund it. Yeah, but it's, yeah, but I, I think it is, you're right, I think it is missing. And it should be something in there now to state that that will be part of the decision process. So. I would approve it now if we added with those adjustments. So moved. Anybody's <laughs> we just on a roll today. <laughs> Do we Not have that, that written down? <laughs> that she's on a roll today. <laughs> the minutes. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> second. I have a motion and a second on the grant policy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a place for further Opposed. discussion or questions about before you? Well, it just got thing. voted. But well, what's you the question? Moved a little fast. <laughs> have you seen our agenda tonight? I, I did. Um, I, my question that I would have asked, I think, in the beginning is: Is there a distinction between the policy and the procedure? Yeah. Um, when and are so? Are you approving two separate things? Nope, it's all in here. So if you're approving the, but if you're approving them all as one thing. If you make a change to the procedure, so if something happens that means that the, the procedure fails at a point, because it's a new procedure and so there are going to be hiccups, does that change have to come back to the board for the board to approve it, or is that something that can be dealt with administratively by the staff? When I have, when we were writing new policies as a part of the VTS who merge one of the things that legal was very, and this is an amazing document, right? but it, it with that clearly has a lot of work put into it. But we were cautioned very clearly <coughs> about making a solid distinction between the policy and the procedure, because the if you fold them together so that they're kind of indistinguishable, when if there's if something there's a kerfuffle somewhere you slow the whole shoot match down a lot on what may be a detail that could be handled in-house. I so think it's that's pretty, my, have you read the document? I don't, yes, I don't. Okay, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it talks about it in there, and there is, it should come right down to submit this on this date, wait for this checkbox type detail, but it does talk about kind of the flow of mm -hmm. the process versus the actual nitpicky piece of it. So I think this is a great balance between policy and letting folks know what to expect in the process without defining every little 
nitpicky detail. That would be more in a procedure that you're talking about. Well, the whole, the, all of the checklists and things, those are all procedures. Yep. But mm -hmm. this is a document meant to not only define what's going to happen, but allow those people that want to apply for a grant and want the town of Randolph to administer it to know what to expect when they step through the door. But you could, could you deal with that just by saying, here's the procedure, here's no. the policy, and uh, you must comply with this procedure and have that be separated? I'm just, I'm, I'm just concerned about the, um, the, the back and forth that may need to be necessary. Sometimes, if, and, and making it may, I think, maybe be a little easier on the folks that are doing the on-the-ground legwork. Okay. For it. Mark, you wanted to comment on that? Yeah, I know I made a point, but the way up, uh, uh, the way the way we're looking at this is, uh, you know, the way we define policy is simply a stated expectation that the town has in terms of uniform expectations that's equitable for everybody uh, that's applying for a grant, and the procedure within that is is again it we were this is not a document on a on a on a collegiate level. This is a step by step guide within the policy in order for everybody to understand what the process is, which of course is a less formal, sort of a less formal uh, statement in terms of how this would, you, you know. So uh, while I understand what you're saying, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think separating the two in this case makes sense because we are, you know, an ordinance or something along these lines is, is, is establishing an expectation that the town is setting in order for the town to agree to, uh, to do something. And the procedure is is offering uh, a uniform practice uh, step by step uh, guide for those that want to participate. So I don't. It doesn't. It, it's not clear to me why we would separate the two. Although I understand what you're saying, but you know this is this is this is not a binding document. This is a uh, this is a document that uh, is allowing everybody to have to sit at the table and have an opportunity to apply for a grant. And it's a way for the town to be able to establish whether or not they have the capacity to be able to do that. Um, so um, I, in this case, I, unless I'm misunderstanding you, I, just, I don't think in this case, separating the two is makes, uh, would be the best outcome. I, I guess I'd, I would be confused about why you would not consider it a binding document once you vote on it. Um, but when, when I well, think- I guess what I'm saying is to be clear that we, this is a, it's still a new, it is a new policy. Um, and so there's going to be like, I think maybe perhaps Larry said, there's, there's going to be a little bit of a, you know, we have to, we have to get our feet uh, under us in terms of how we're, how we're implementing it. So there's going to be, this is going to be a little time before we, before it's clear and smooth for everybody. You know, a lot of people have had different, they've, they, they've, they've established with the town a process that they've done for, for, uh, for grants and, and applications, and those people are going to have to make adjustments, and there are people that have never applied for, and those people are going to have to. So, so there's just there's going to be a there's going to be a learning curve here, is what I mean by not binding. There's going to be a learning curve in 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 that within the procedure. Yeah. So when I think about this, so Mark, I I did disability services for for the um, for not state college system for a very long time <coughs> and our we had policies around what that entailed right you know who the that we were compliant with the law and but they were fairly simple the language of the policies was fairly simple the procedure was what a student would do when they were interested in accessing those, you know, that, that part of their education. Um, and we, the, it was pretty clear, legal was very clear, that we should not conflate those two things. You know, that, and because so, if we, particularly this. for us, because uh -huh. if there was, if something went wrong procedurally, okay, or if there was a part of the procedure that proved to be cumbersome, or needed to be changed or needed to be addressed in a short amount of time, you couldn't do that until it came back to the board, the body that approved it. So, but Robin, at this point, we've adopted this, and it's a procedure that's come in from staff recommended, and as we just said, we can change it 
at a future board meeting. Okay. It's a new process, it's a new document. We're gonna live it for a while, and then if we have to make adjustments, it can come back and we'll make those adjustments. But right okay. now, it's, it's out there. We've discussed it for months um, in, in different conversations with staff to get it developed. So I think at this point, we're gonna move on in the agenda and take up the next policy that we want to adopt tonight um, and keep the agenda moving. But I understand where you're coming from, but at this point, it's we're going to live this for a while and see what happens. Okay. Thanks. Next up is the background check policy. It, uh, yep, it's a basic one. Um, tries to guide who we do a background check for. It's pulled from a number of existing policies, templates in other towns. Um, so it's based on a fairly standard framework and this would put into place and into practice. Um, so another sort of missing link in our portfolio. So this will codify what's expected, how it's expected, how it happens, and for whom, and then also what type of offenses we're looking for. Uh, those are listed in the bullet points throughout. Anybody have any questions on this one? I thought this one was pretty straightforward, too. Okay. We talked about this at one point back in the spring, too, so this is flows yep. out of that yep. process. Okay. Amy? I'm Amy Grasnick. I'm the director of Kimball Library, and I'm just serendipitously here for this um, question. Who is the department head responsible for this? Who in the town's administration? does the background check and does them annually. Yes, the managers, I would say, are okay. responsible to make sure they're new employees and that the folks are coming through. So we'll be trained on how to do that and what service to use and all of that good stuff. Yep, and it'll be pretty spectrum. simple for you. And will existing employees also have to go through that? Just so, if it's an annual check. Yep. When most of this run through our PD? Yep. Just kind of like be a similar paperwork to when you're subbing at the school or whatever? Or the, um, the school system, if you even want to go on a field trip with your kid now, you have to go through it. It's like three pieces of paper, and you take it to the PD, and get your fingerprints done, and they send it off. So it's pretty simple. That would be, I think, the standard, but there's also a BCIC um, practice protocol. There's a place you can access it, receive training, essentially be certified, be able to do some level of check. Obviously, the fingerprint is a different animal, but in terms of running a name, so to speak. And I see both employees and volunteers are subject to this. That's correct. Okay, well, just let me know when you can train me on how to do this. Any more questions on the policy? Mm -hmm. If not, anybody ready to adopt? I uh, motion to adopt this policy. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Excuse me, Trini. Yeah. I have a, uh, since we're back at B, we've gone so fast. Um, I have a clarifying yeah, question. At C. C. Did you want Sorry. to talk about the table at all, or did I miss that part? Oh, it wasn't a separately listed bullet, but it was in. Don't have to if you don't want to. It's just a review schedule for policies and ordinances. But before you move on. Yeah, we can do that one. Yep. We can do the uh, schedule, and then we'll do the committees, and then we'll stop back at D. Okay. Only for a short visit, though. No, it, it. it went so fast, I'm not sure that <laughs> everything got covered, so. So really what we did is just put together, a, there's a sort of two tables that were in the packets. One are the policies, one are the ordinances. What we tried to do was draft a review schedule for those. Um, this is not ironclad. This is um, what we hope to achieve, especially on the policy end. This is a fairly substantial lift, even if the policies are fairly simple. This was born of the fact that as we've tried to 
use different policy, different work pieces. We've found they're anywhere from <coughs> five, ten years old on sort of the younger end to as much as 40 plus years old in some cases. And so to try to put us on this regular schedule and then coming out of this project, hopefully we can get on a regular schedule of review. This will be a lot easier. It's small adjustments. Um, there are fewer ordinances overall, and the ordinance process is a little lengthier. It has some statutory components. So that's why there are, when you look at that side of the table, there are fewer of those per year. Um, the priority ranking just mean the ones that we'll try to put to the front of the line. Um, and there's no set schedule. We might try to aim for quarterly, but there's no magic in it for the policies. And then maybe split them throughout the fiscal year into little halves um, for the ordinance piece, just because you've got those warning requirements and some appeal periods there. And so generally we try to look at ones that are older, um, ones that have presented some kind of issue, ones that are tied to some sort of emergent set of questions, um, that would be good to address them now. Um, and so you can see the average policy age at the time of review is close to 13 years. And then for the ordinances, you're getting closer to 18 years in terms of how old they'll be when we look at them. Um, and then we started to work police policies, even though we haven't designated them yet, into, say, next year and the year after. That just reflects that we went through a whole process of review and adoption when we restarted the department, so those are all fairly new. doesn't mean we wouldn't put one into the mix if circumstances warranted. Uh, some sort of change in law, change in practice at the Criminal Justice Academy, that was something that prompted us to, to move something to the front of the line. And then we'll put them in little chunks, especially as we get more familiar with what we face in operation and where there are strengths and weaknesses. So those enter in fiscal 26. We're assuming when we calculate ages and when we start, that's the front end of the fiscal year. So it's you know, 26, we'll be into that, say, next year at this time. Um, it be some of those things. And they range from the place to try to just put the general category. So this year, if we can get there, you've worked on the background check, the grants management one. Um, we should look at our delinquent tax policy, especially with changes in delinquent tax law, our personnel policy. Um, this fits into some of the recruitment and retention issues we've had and also clarifies at one point with a draft agenda we were going to maybe ask you about vacation approval and stuff like that. It would be nice to just get some clarity there. Um, road adoptions come up because we've had some um, questions that have risen from that. And then things like employee conduct, communication, social media. Um, and then road and bridge standards. And then I just put it on there so I don't lose it. Like encampments, public camping, just if you want it, it's there. You can sit, roll, do whatever. Um, and then you get into out years, you get into different ones. Some of them are should be fairly simple. Um, the refund and small credit balance, once you've, that should be pretty easy once we've set the delinquent tax policy and we've understood the legal changes. That should come together pretty fast. On the ordinance end, same thing. The skateboard ordinance. That's one of those, do you want to keep it? Um, it's from the late 90s, I believe. There's such a problem in town. We, we, don't, yeah, we don't have rampant skateboard <laughs> use issues. Um, doesn't mean we couldn't dispose, but so it's one of those where it's a full-on ordinance. Um, we would just have to vote to eliminate it, right? Right. Or some of the others, like the public assembly, curb cut. Um, one of the fire chiefs raised an issue with some of the false alarm stuff. You and I talked about sort of a blighted properties or upholstering like a solid waste junkyard ordinance set of provisions just to give ourselves some more tools if we can. So those are some of the pieces that we're in. You adopt the table, we'll try to live with it. We'll make adjustments as we need to. It's not, like we said, it's not set in stone. It's just... That's more of a guide. Yep. Okay. You don't have to adopt it. We just recommend it. You can roll with it if you're comfortable too. Should we adopt it? I don't know that we have to adopt it. It's more like a work plan, isn't it? I don't care. Which way do you want it? We'll adopt it if you want, but it's more like a work plan. I'm fine with it being a work I'd plan. I'd rather give you the flexibility to move them around if you wanted to without being held to that. Yeah. And some of them, like the Code of Ethics, they're out a year just so that there's training protocol. Some of the recent legislative changes <coughs> can get kind of fully baked. And if we have to because of deadlines and timelines, we'll move that into this year, but it sits out there just so we don't forget it. That would be what I want it to do too. Okay. We'll use it as a guidepost. Sounds that sounds good. I like the idea of you being having that flexibility. Board committee commission appointments. Got two to consider. I never saw application materials from Josh, so it's 
to whatever extent that matters to you on that. Um, so what Trevor is referring to is we're, we have um, two and we might have three openings on the planning commission. And we really need to be filling these seats. Um, our last meeting we had, um, we had, we had scheduled, um, we weren't able to have a quorum and had to cancel the meeting. Um, we're not getting, we're, not, we're just not getting work done that we need to get done because we don't have a quorum on the board. Um, I recently asked um, Josh Hanford if he would join the planning commission, and he said that he would. I'm not sure would like to do so was, was exactly the way he put it, but he would, <laughs> he would, he would be willing <laughs> to, to do it in, a, in, a, in, a, in an earnest way. And, uh, um, but apparently he hasn't, hasn't had a chance to send us his bio, but um, those oh, of you who don't know, A fair know, number of us know him. He, he's, <laughs> a fair, he's, a, he's a recently, um, he's a recent commissioner of, of housing at the state level. Um, extensive background, long time Randolph Center resident. Um, and we have a meeting later this week. He moved over to the league, right? <laughs> yes, he's now working for the Almost said Brady. And so he brings a, a wealth of knowledge and experience. And uh, mm -hmm. I would love it if we could vote to put him on the planning commission. Can we do that without documentation from him that he's willing? <laughs> we, have draft. Draft. Yeah. <laughs> we could do it as long as he submits the documentation and is willing to Trevor, right? As a condition of his appointment. I mean, it's an informal process. We don't really need it. It is, but we've required it of everybody else, so for consistency. I mean he can I send think an we email. Have occasionally he can't send a quick email. Can you text him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't want to give him Can another out. Him? That's what's going on. Let's call him. Let's call him. Let's call him on interview right now. It's up to you. I mean, you can make a motion and approve it. It's just I, we should be consistent. That's all. But. I mean, he's 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 well known. Usually, we get those bios because. Like not everybody right. knows who the person is. Know. It gives us some more information. It's a little bit of our vetting process, but given his sort of stature in the community, I'm not sure it's really <laughs> necessary. Um, I'll move to appoint him to the planning committee. Um, should be require an email or not? It's your call. How about upon email of acceptance? <laughs> 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 I mean, we do want to make sure there's commit. Like, if he really doesn't want to do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so, so how do we know about this? Uh, uh, so I moved to appointment, appointment. Um, conditioned on him um, accepting. Him accepting. Pending receipt of an email of interest and acceptance. So, so that, moved. That would go. Okay, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Who should uh, carry? I will send him a note. <laughs> <laughs> send him an email to send us an email? Exactly. <laughs> um, <coughs> well, I don't know if that's worse. And then we have. Um, <laughs> An email from Mike Hildebrand <coughs> uh, putting forward Dave Powell. Dave's here for you tonight, too, back here, so. Yeah. Um, are you here all night with Judy? Sure. Are you running away? <laughs> okay. I can be here all night. <laughs> um, Let's come back to this one because I just want to get clarity about whether we should go into executive session to talk some about priorities and whatnot. But and then we'll, we'll come back to this. But I won't forget you. All right. And was there something on the PM one form that's on the agenda that you didn't like? Um. Well, um, the wording of the motion confused me because there's been conversation about. The language in the in the grant agreement, and I just wanted to 
under in the in some of the the process, and I wanted to understand what language was accepted. It hasn't been. All we're doing here is signing the PM uh, agreeing to the PM one form, the, not to the actual language of the grant agreement. That's still going back and forth between the town and the state. Okay, that wasn't my understanding, but I mean I understand that there's some that the state has to accept, but I understood that the PM one is the authorization to sign the grant agreement, and if there is a a change of some kind, it would need to be in the vote. Am I understanding that wrong, Trevor? I mean, Mark's got his hand up. Maybe let him take first. Uh, acceptable. Let me see if I can I can I can do this. Uh, first of all, I apologize. It all happened so quick in the beginning, and I'm on vacation. I think I spent a little bit too much time in the sun. Uh, it all happened so fast. I just sort of went whoa. Uh, so I apologize. Um, so yeah, let's just let's just rewind for a second. Obviously, this is a really important project. Everybody spent a ton of time uh, and effort uh, up to this point. We're at a point where sort of the rubber meets the road on the project. Uh, as you know, we, there's just not a whole lot of time in the summer for work. Uh, we've got uh, the work can be done on building the streets uh, this this summer uh, if we can all come to terms with what we're you know what we're doing. And we did that. Uh, the town's proposed language for the grant agreement regarding uh, the road adoption following the inspection. We all kind of talked about that in terms of what we'll be putting into when we respond through gears. Uh, regarding the PM1, that is the language that we're, we're putting in. So I think what Julie was saying is effectively, we're all sort of, we're, we're at a place where um, there's an agreement in terms of that language. Um, what I wanted to address was uh, like a slightly different, well, first of all, before I go forward, I think we're, we're all on the same page there, correct? But yeah, just hang on with the process that's laid out. This was what came from VCDP as a recommendation to keep everything moving forward was that to change the proposed grant agreement, to submit those modifications, adopt the PM1, have the motion essentially be contingent on the modifications being reasonably met, mm -hmm. and then at that point the grant agreement can be signed. So that process is why that's set up that way, and the motion is based on that advice to submit the modification yeah, we do the pm1 we do the grant agreement so that's where that piece i just didn't hear the modified language in the vote and so i'm not sure it 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 was right. clear which language was being accepted by right. the pm1 i think it's the one that we've all seen at this point and then there were some other yeah. languages in a draft other language in a draft grant agreement that I understand have been taken out, but we do want to verify, such as who's responsible for Davis Bacon wage compliance. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to read that if you'd like, just so we're on the same page. Sure. Or... Yes. Yeah, I think it would be wise. To... Okay. Completion following an inspection by an engineer certifying that the road and related infrastructure were constructed to the applicable state and local standards, the select board may hold a vote to consider whether or not to assume ownership and obligations for maintenance. If the infrastructure does not meet the necessary state and local standards, the town may ask the subgrantee to remedy any deficiencies identified. Following the completion of work to remedy any deficiencies and an additional inspection and certification by an engineer that the applicable and necessary standards have been met, the subgrantee may request that the town consider the request to assume ownership, excuse me, and maintenance obligations. If notwithstanding such efforts, the deficiencies identified by the town cannot be or are not corrected to meet the applicable and necessary standards, RACDC or its successor in title shall assume the obligation of maintenance for the infrastructure. So that is that is the language that we're, we are when we send our response to the grant offer we're replacing what the town what the state proposed with that language um and that's the language that we all came came to agree collectively so we submit all this up everything goes in and then what happens if the state says no then we're 
the facts negotiated. Yes, that would be, that would be in our three. meeting with them, they implied that they would be for for guidance, good yeah. with it. Yeah, and they have indicated that in the to the extent I've been on some of the chains, it seems to be holding. Um, okay, so that's what I just wanted to make sure because that was not the proposed language that they sent. Mm -hmm. Um, originally, so I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page on that and that it got into whatever authority needed to be given to change the language. So I don't know if that you feel like that requires an amendment to that vote or whatever, but I think that's that was one thing that we discussed, and, um, and the other thing was about the um, well, anyway, so we could finish that and then I could bring up the other thing, but so there was understanding. And of what the grant agreement was and what was going back to them, the PM1, my understanding from talking with them, was just needed to go with that back to them mm -hmm. as authority. And that's what we voted on was signing that PM1 to send it back with that version of with the grant the agreement. keeps the process rolling forward, too. It's so you feel that Trevor has the authority to change the language without you voting on it? Well, if the state comes back and says they're not accepting it, then I think it depending what they want to do, it changes I, I mean the proposed, the, the change proposed language. That's yeah. all I was talking but about. But that's already in there, right? That's already going back to the that's state. That's what's going to be submitted. talked with the state yeah. about this. They've, a, they've implied that they'll accept it. So it's gone back okay. in, and the form right. has to go with it. If that's, like, that's, if that's clear to everyone, I just wasn't, I wasn't sure, because it hadn't been discussed in the meeting. Yeah. I wasn't clear that it was clear to everyone. But that's what was going on. Um, I guess um, the other point of clarity um, was on the process and the, um, the approval of plan, which we also have in terms of yeah adoption. I I haven't heard exactly how if that also has clarity. So Mark is raising. Go ahead, Mark. So here's where. Uh, this is where I said the rubber meets the road kind of comment. The uh, the where we're at now in terms of getting the work done with the investors. There's an investor meeting tomorrow, and Julie can uh, elaborate more on this. But the the what we what we have in place is that the uh, or what we've discussed is that the the design. All right, not the not the completed work, but the design. Could in fact be uh, DNK could provide the necessary documentation and certification of the road design on request, and that would still leave the independent engineer by the town to to be responsible for the construction. And actually, you know, everything that we've talked about and discussed would remain in place. The reason why it's important for us to separate the two is so we can we can allow RACDC. The opportunity to move forward now, as opposed to later. The uh, Julie, if I'm if I'm explaining this correctly, um, or if I'm missing something, please let me know. And this would be a very simple process tonight. Of course, you can answer all your questions about. Uh, we can, hopefully can answer all your questions about the design build. But the design was in fact by DNK, who built the first half of the road in Salisbury Square, and there were no problems associated with that. And essentially, what they're doing, like I said, is they're willing to certify that their plans are accurate um, and provide that level of protection for the town. And this gives this gives uh, Julie the opportunity to move forward with the process. And that would some sort of evidence of that uh, for uh, for for Julie to go to the to the investors to get that to get the implicit or explicit approval to move forward is what is necessary. So what we're asking is if if there's a vote to to approve the separation of the two in terms of uh, in terms of the process of overseeing this through the independent engineer. So Mark, how do we get the independent evaluation of the plans? If Dubois and King did the plans, we can't have Dubois and King do an independent evaluation of the plans for the town. Well, that I think I, it's certainly there's a situation where one could. One could argue that, and that makes sense. But this is a, you know, this is we. This is a this is a project in terms of scope for the town. That's you know, it's it's a larger project. We have a history with DNK, and 
we also have, not only do we have a history with DNK here, they are the largest civil engineering firm in the state. They, they've been here for 60 years. They, they helped build our town um, and they're willing to legally certify the work that they've done, um, whether, whether, they're, whether they're being paid. In this case, they will actually be paid through us for that certification, not through RACDC. I do understand in a, in a, you know, perhaps a different situation, I would, I would also agree with you. But again, this is sort of on a process that's gone back to all the way to 2009. We're at a place where we don't, Julie can't run the risk of losing investors. The process is ready to go. The work can be done this fall and all the mitigation measures have been put in place to be able to, to move forward. The, the largest risk from the perspective of the town, and correct me if I'm wrong, Trevor, is, is the work itself. That's where the greatest risk is to the town. The design work, there's, there's, there's no statute of repose in Vermont, so uh, DNK is going to be on the hook for their design plan all the way up to the statute of limitations. So we, we're extraordinarily protected. In this case, the reason why uh, Julie's asking for, for us to be able to do this in the form of a vote is to secure the, the incredibly complicated layer of investors that are on the project. And I, I will let Julie continue from here if there are additional questions, but um, that's why we're asking for the, the proposed vote for, to separate the two. So Mark, the challenge I have with that <clears throat> is that independent review, and that's done on all big construction projects. So it, I get it that it's a big project and it's sitting here in front of us and they'd like to go to construction, but we didn't create that timeline. And it's a bad practice to just accept one engineer's work and on something that important. And we've already met with three or four engineers and the one that is willing to step up and do the work already has some challenges with those plans. So, and we know that now, so we can't just walk away from that. Right, but the, like, the challenges, as, as I understand it, the challenges are basically ingress and egress, which we, we spoke about at length at the DRB and, and, and Julie can speak further about this, but it's actually um, it's communicated in the uh, in the in the actual proposal. So, um, so I I don't see I really well I I'll, Julie I'll let you I'll let you pick up on this one. But um, all the people that have seen that document um, haven't had a problem with the ingress and egress that have. That are civil engineers and licensed, and that it's it is a doable project, and there's no there's no dangers of not having a a second uh, entrance or exit, uh, given the the scope of the project. And I I do understand that you have you know you have a a couple of questions and concerns, but I think the you know, the, the the there's a small amount of risk that the, that I'm recommending that the town take on here. In the uh, because there's so like I can't I can't overstate this. There are so many people that are screaming at us to provide the housing, the affordable housing that this project is going to to put forth for the community. And if we if we hold off because of one small fear on the design build, that in my opinion is will be explained away quite easily. We we run the risk of the project. Uh, you know, potentially coming like it, it just the risk is too high to continue to wait. And and I I really I'd like to give Julie an opportunity to, to to explain herself about why this is really important to separate the two. And I'd I'd really like to hear from the other board members in terms of how they feel uh based on uh what Julie says, based on what everybody understands. And I'd also like to to hear from the, the town manager also like explain his worry and he's got the most experience at the table here in terms of the 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 what the primary risks and concerns are for this project and like i said before it's not in the design don't worry about everything all the time so <laughs> i mean i think some of the design stuff will be caught in the 
construction inspection process, just as stuff goes into the ground as designed and we're looking out to make sure it functions properly, the things that we take over. So you will catch, or you should catch, for the most part, stuff, stormwater, um, sub-base, asphalt, compaction, those things should be caught. There are the other questions <coughs> that wouldn't be resolved through that level of review. So it's really about timing. In an ideal world, um, we have a process built where this happens before it gets to the DRV, but we're here, so it's, it's an odd spot. There are some concerns, such as the two points of ingress, egress. It's a weird lot. Um, but, but so some of the stuff will get caught in construction inspection. There are some things that... Uh, so what happens when you're in the middle of construction and the engineers or the town side says, this isn't going to work, you no, got to change this? We're, like, we're asking that the town agree to accept the certification of DMK as to the as to compliance with the road adoption policy. And I think that the DRB has already weighed in twice on the the rules around the two entrances. I think that's not in the road adoption policy, that's in the subdivision policy and that's dealt with there. I think also, I mean uh, you know this has been um, is it, it's, it's not a new request, and we, we are just running out of time to make this feasible to do. And, um, and, and it's, um, you know, we all have timelines, and we understand that under ideal circumstances, we have all the time in the world, but we just don't anymore. This has been, it's a, it's a process that takes a lot of time, a lot of coordination, a lot of people, a lot of money. And this has the potential to really um, I am not, I'm not overstating, I think most people are not, like, I'm not a big overstater, right? I qualify everything. This has the potential to kill this project right now because of delay. Because delay is, uh, is costly and can cost more than just money. Um, so we have had this approved through the DRB twice. It's in the DRB um, decisions. We've been through legal review and engineering review of all the town plans and policies. You have a certified engineer. To my knowledge, there's nothing in the road adoption policy that requires third party engineer or an engineer certification at all, for that matter. We're fine with having you know, somebody oversee. We're having people oversee the construction. But we need to know what we're constructing. We can't sign contracts. We can't close out things. We need to move before another construction season goes by, or we are in serious trouble. And I'm not overstating in the slightest. So, but um, how do you get around the designers certifying their own work? I don't. That's I think the there are plenty of guess. cases. I, I have heard of cases of the town not requiring certification on projects that um, involve construction. And I think there is nothing in your policy that requires you to get certification for construction, and if it's built badly, and we have the first part. To, so the first part of this road was built to the exact same specifications as, this, as the second part will be essentially. There's very minor changes in, you know, mostly due to fire marshal requests. So even so, you know, we're fine with having oversight because everybody wants oversight. We want to make sure it's built right. But the plans we've been over now for, you know, I think the first time we, we reviewed those plans and brought them back in a memo to the town was, you know, two or three years ago. So we've been discussing this for a long time. There's a lot, there has been time to like have a conversation about that, but we are out of time to like converse about even changing plans at this point. It's just getting super critical <clears throat> from a, a time perspective that we will, if you lose a season, you have lost the project essentially because the cost change. I mean, you know, while we're talking, the costs change. So uh, I don't, I think that the risk reward issue here is, is at hand. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I just, I, I have no more, you know, I'm running out of rope sincerely to get this project done. And it's, it's impossible for us to, you know, so if we're being asked to put up engineering costs for the oversight, we're being asked to put up a bond, and the town can't even approve that this meets, you know, let us say that this meets the town 
road adoption policy that we've also spent money to review and ensure we meet going forward, then we're being asked to do everything, and the town is not even giving us the, yeah, go ahead, construct it, as long as you build it right, you know, we'll, we'll adopt it. And, the, and that's where I can't, like, I, if I have nothing to go on, I get stuck, right? I can't do, I can't build, I can't, I have to spend money and I can't build. So that's a, not a, a workable solution um, for this project. And I think we've done like everything in our power to respond to you know reasonable questions and comments. I just I just we're out of time. So what are we asking to vote on at this point? They want us to waive having an engineer for the town look at the plans for the road that they want us to adopt. Or, is there something more the particular end. that investors are looking at for language, or is that? We, we just need to be able to construct, and we can't. In other words, we're in a little bit of a catch-22, a big catch-22. If if we have to construct to the town's plans, and then and the engineer's supposed to make sure we do that, but we don't, when we start constructing, know that we have met that burden, then we can't essentially construct without constructing something that the town hasn't opined will meet the burden. So now. We almost can't win at the end because the because the, the rule could change while we're constructing. So the what we're asking is that DMK is willing to certify its plans to the town. So say these plans are correct. We believe these meet the town standards. This is why, and we've actually submitted that all the DRB reviewed it. We've submitted it to the town, so that's all known. Um, and there might you know. It, we're happy to, to share that more widely, but everybody I think who needed to see that has that. The so, second part, though, is the, what the town had requested about um, having us pay for hopefully reasonable costs to have a, a third party or review the construction to say at the end it was it was constructed to the plans that. DNK certified to the town and the town accepted as meeting the road adoption policy. That way, if that works, then we can both start and have oversight. I hope that's clear um, because I just, I'm going to attach 22 otherwise. So I'm still going back to the just the original question. Mm -hmm. The ask is for the board to accept the designs as submitted and certified by the engineer, just in terms of considering an action. I, I, I don't, does that do it? Um, pretty much. The, the, and I'm suggesting one step further. The DNK said it will certify to the town. I, they're taking one at a time just yeah. to get them digestible. Does that answer? Yes. Can we do that with so having on the agenda? It's all I don't part know. of the Salisbury Square project. Mm -hmm. I think it's well, part of what we're, we're doing pretty here. specifically asked for that, but now they've come back and said, want to make a change to it. My concern is you're you're asking the designer to certify their design. It's and of course they're going to because they don't want to be in a position of malpractice on their contract with that. But that's terrible, terrible public policy. I understand the timing, but I guess I would like to know like how long how long would it take the engineer contractor to review those plans. I mean, if they're perfect and they're great shape that D and K is willing, it shouldn't take them very long, right? Is this is a possibility of disagreement? And we're just open, you know, we can disagree. Given, given the timing and the scope of this project and the history and where we just happen to be right now, like I, I get your concerns. They make sense to me. As Mark said, and, and I and Mark has really do dove into this issue in incredible detail and has been extremely thoughtful about the entire process. And you know what he just said made a lot of sense to me, which is that yes, it does involve a, a small amount of risk on the part of the town to go down this path, but the but the rewards are really big, and the and the risk of not doing it and having the project crumble. Um, I think we're in a place where we really just have to um, admit that this isn't perfect, but we need to 
do what we need to do to, to make sure that the project moves forward. And, and I'd really like to see us vote to help, help that along at this point and, and, and really ensure that we have a smooth path. And, you know, the other part of this, I think, is that, you know, the actors involved, I think, are all acting in good faith. And so if there are issues that come up, um, yeah, it, I mean, theoretically, it could, it could be a problem. But I, I, I suspect that it will all get worked out to people's satisfaction one, one way or the other, and we'll, we'll, be, able, we'll be okay. Yeah, we're, we're all in this for the same goals. I mean, it's, there's, we're trying to do something to put it down. Do any of the funders have like a any kind of third party review of the plans? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> yeah. that's, well, that's what, I mean. So, Every single one of them. Right. So I mean, I guess that. I mean, I work for the state. I'm giving out millions of dollars, and we have our own third party review of the things that we're spending our money on. So like. To me, that I mean, it gives some. It depends what they were looking at. Yeah. The project, right? So you'd yeah. have to dig into that. But I know our road foreman has not seen, has not planned, Still. even from a function perspective. So that's a little concerning. We. But the, uh, yeah, I and mean, these are all. Really, oh, may I speak? Yeah, I'm just just one second, Mark. Like, can you? Can a motion be crafted? that allows it to go forward with the D and K piece if, as long as there's no, like, so that when there's a, when something's identified during construction or whatever that's an issue, that then the, I don't, you can't have a problem identified and then have D and K come in and say, it's okay. Like, somewhere in there, the town's engineer has to have some authority in their over and or the town over their review. Like at some point, you can't have the fox in charge of the chicken coop, unfortunately. So if you're in there and there's a problem with a stormwater system or a compaction rate or something, and the engineer brings it up, there's got to be a no. That is. I think, path to resolution I think that's, that's not D and K saying, yeah, just do this. No, no, no. I think that's exactly what the construction oversight is. It's it's and for all you know, for all of the so there's the HFA has its construction oversight, the HCB uses theirs, the investors will use that one as well. Then we have ours and we have a clerk of the works. They're all looking as well as D and K is working on our behalf, but they're all looking to see if the person constructing it has constructed it to their plan. So they're not going to say it's OK if it's not to the to the plan so and what it if meets it's the, not? the V trans standard. What if it's to the plan and it's not going to work? Like, that's the part where we so have the, the challenge, right? Like, But that's, OK, so but that's, so most of these <coughs> standards are V trans standards. And, and they are, uh, you know, they have been and are readily available for review, and they are um, the same, again, the same standards that created the first roadbed that has been there for 12 years and has, you know, stood the test of time. So we're just asking that, essentially, that on whatever little issue someone might find, maybe, we believe that and we have done thorough reviews for years that we meet this plan and that we make sure we meet the, the standards, that, that the town essentially agreed to take DNK certification that it meets those standards. Everything else, including if there's an obvious, like, an obvious mistake that calls into question something like somebody misdrafted something on the plans, and it's clearly got to be corrected. What Mars said is true. We all work in good faith. Nobody wants that road falling down. It's against the interests of our investors, of our funders, of our homeowners, of our you know rental owners, and of us. It's, it's just against everybody's interest to let something like that happen. But we can't start if we can't start. And, it has been going on for a while that, you know, there's process and stuff, but we're kind of like, we are just out of that leeway anymore. So 
I, I think some trust in this, is, in this has to be built um, to, to know that we're not going to try to do anything that is going to in any way endanger the success of that road uh, for the purposes it's being built for. Mark? Thank you. So I, I concur with everything that everyone is saying here, but just for some from some perspective, historically, the Baumans, the, the founders of DNK, are so deeply rooted in our community. Uh, they they help in many respects help design this town. They've been uh, you know they played a very important role. They're deeply rooted here, um, and it wasn't just uh, the engineer who designed the plans, but it's the engineer's team, the engineer's boss. In fact, reached back out to us explaining that. It would be it would it has been reviewed by the team. It hasn't just been reviewed by one or two engineers, but it's been the entire department, which is a customary practice at uh, at DNK when when something like this is done. It's not just one engineer who does it. And I know it it, it could happen, but you know DNK has been uh, a very loyal. Uh, uh, and it, it's clear that they've wanted to work with our town. They want to continue to. They want to be a part of this community. They want to see the community uh, thrive. And so I would understand, Trini, your concerns if this were, a, you know, someone that we hired on the cheap from out of out of town, out of state. Um, but the, you know, we know where we know where the founders live. As a matter of fact, I live in the house that he built. Uh, so these people are uh, these people are not uh, they're not fly by night people. If there's a mistake. Which I, I am so certain that there isn't a mistake in these plans, given the number of people that are involved. Um, but there's the mitigation in terms of covering our, you know what, is extraordinarily. It's present, it's there, uh, and it's substantial. And so I, and again, it comes back to having faith that you know we have to just pull the trigger uh, at some point. And what we're proposing is that we just we put it on the table, we have the vote, and and we allow Julie. To, to kick butt and get this process this project moving um, and we'll still have so there'll be actually four engineers total looking at the project going forward that's a lot I get your perspective mark but I can tell you from the other side of it I'm dealing with some errors that were D and K errors so I know they live in this community and whatnot but they're human and they put forth things and and some of them are just you know so I'm not gonna air all that here but there's a reason I'm questioning not having an independent review would it work I mean essentially what if the if the independent review is of how it was completed that it that it's it, supposed to be the design before you go to construction but but that's where the time crunch is impacting it. But if, but if they build it and it comes then down to, I mean, we have to then eventually possibly consider if we're going to adopt the road. And if, if, if that's where we were like, we're not going to adopt the road unless it meets the standards of a third party, you know, after the fact. I think it gives us. That's a, what we. That's what we can't live up to um, if you if you don't create the standard until the end of the process after the road is built then we have invested in the in everything for nothing you see what I mean I mean so there, there's basically two processes one is that we need to know that we meet the town standard in order to begin construction or we may be constructing something that the town later says oh I'm sorry but it doesn't meet the town standard. Now, us we've been, an engineer to this has it. been. And we couldn't get an engineer to review it because of time. We timing. have one. We yeah. have one that'll do it, but now they're saying there's no time for them to review it. Yeah. This is number three. Okay. It took us a while. So, Just from availability. So the engineer that was found, what's the timeline for that? For design. I don't know if, if you've got to have shovels in the ground in the next few weeks. I don't know that. I don't know. I wouldn't want to speak for them. Yeah, that's and that's the that's the quandary here is that they may not we don't fit. know. This is a short yeah. very easy question. And then the, you know, then there's the if they find an issue. Mm -hmm. Right, then we have right, to, then it has to be, but we would want to know they found an issue. Right. right, right that's so how do you Jay? 
Um, so Jenny Carter, for the record, and um, I'm here, uh, employed at Vermont Law and Graduate School in our energy clinic, and we've been working with the RACDC on this project. And there's just a few kind of points I'd like to make. Um, one is on technical, and maybe you all have moved past it, but on the two, um, two means of access, um, I'd like to point out, which well, Julie already has pointed out, that the DRB approved um, the two points of access, both in the original permit and the existing permit. But I would also say um, where that two points of access comes from is in, um, I think it is in, it's in the road adoption standard, um, but it's one of seven criteria which you need to meet six of. And so I would say you know, the DRB has already determined that they meet that um, two access, two points of access. Um, but it, even if they didn't, even if that was a criteria, Du Bois and King has already demonstrated how they meet all seven criteria and only need to meet six. And I'd further point out that the current zoning ordinance actually only in the, um, in the site review criteria only allows the default as one access and you have to get special permission to have two accesses. Um, in, the, in the current zoning ordinance. So um, I would hope to just put that issue to rest in terms of the need for two accesses. Adding on to that also, the state fire department, um, or the state fire marshal approved these designs, um, as well as the town um, fire chief have looked at these designs. So, um, so I think on that score, um, I think we're quite safe. Um, I can't say any better than Julie and Mark have about how important this project is to the town and how important the timing is. Um, so I would also say regarding the conflict of interest, Trini, I, I, I am very sympathetic because I'm always kind of the person who's looking at those kinds of issues. And I know in the past, I would say many, many years in the past, I've seen times where it's like, I've seen people like, submitting plans for their own properties that are being approved where I think there are real clear conflict of interest. Here, it's, I, I, and I, it doesn't discount what you're saying about if you've seen errors, but here it's Du Bois and Kings, I don't see it as the fox guarding the hen house in any way because it's not their, it's not their project, it's not their land. Yes, they are certifying their own designs, but that's pretty, Common to have somebody certify their own designs, um, and so and the town there is nothing in the town road adoption policy that calls for a third party engineer, um, and so then the final point just brings me back to how time sensitive this is, um, and that I I have seen Julie working on this and working with the funders, and I have seen how difficult it has been to piece all these different funders together. And it, when one, one <laughs> string gets, sometimes gets pulled, that whole house of cards. And the reason, the reason the law school is in it, I'll close with the reason law school is in this is because in the energy clinic, um, is because of our belief in um, making sure that low and moderate income housing um, for a change now has highly energy efficient housing that not only reduces people's energy bills, but it's much better construction overall. So that this is a project that is gonna provide such needed housing to a such needed demographic. And taking off my Vermont Law School hat and putting on my Randolph hat, um, it's, I just think it's incredibly important and would hate to see this opportunity lost. I don't think anybody's trying to lose it. It's more uh, like protecting uh, and uh, when you're, you know, our, I spoke with our highway manager and he hasn't even looked at the plans to see what equipment would be needed and what the, what the plowing, if it makes sense. So that concerns me because usually we have but that type of review. They have but looked at it in, in the past. I understand they looked at a curb highway. cut. Right. They looked at a curb yeah. cut for it, but right. that's different. But we have we I have tried to sit down with John Feeney. Uh, do we, like, I, it's not because we haven't tried. I know John's extraordinarily busy. I know that the highway department has a million projects. The floods have been have been 
uh, you know, very taxing on everybody. And um, you know, we have tried uh, to sit with John. I've had, I've, I put them all out in the conference room a few times to see if we could go over it, but he's just busy. And you know, and this brings us back to where the rubber meets the road here. And we've just we've just hit the point where we need to decide if we're going to move forward, even if we can't absolutely 100% say we've mitigated every possible scenario of risk. Can we answer? Is it one last thing, Fred? Is you're absolutely right. At the end of the day, your policy, no one can force you to adopt this road. What you're doing is by bifurcating this, is you're giving sort of RCDC a good faith kind of, in the end of the day, it's a good faith sort of um, uh, statement that you're accepting these road plans, but it, it isn't binding you in stone. Nothing is, the, the road adoption policy makes it very clear that it is um, a discretionary function of the select board. So what I would hope is if something did come up, the town and RACDC would all figure out how to work it out together since it's something we all want. But at the end of the day, you guys can, I, I know this is going to pay Julie, I want to cover her ears, but at the end of the day, you guys can say no if you don't think that it turned out the way you wanted. But you don't want to have to have that no, you don't. situation. No, you don't. So how do you, but, you know, but so you'd like to have comfort on both sides that but I think at this point there, it doesn't look like it, we can we're not gonna have comfort on both sides I think it is gonna take a little leap of faith yes. and we, you know we're willing to take the leap of faith about the bond and the engineer and spending all this money you know like, but I think we're asking for like a commensurate leap of faith and trust there were there were partners in this in a sense where you know we were created for the town of um, as a there's no neighborhood beautification project to start with, but yeah. um, uh, so how do we? It, so if we said that the plans we're going to allow D and K to certify their plans, what they should be anyway when they sign the little engineer block on them. Can we? Should we still allow them to move forward with that, but have the engineer look at the plans to identify any big issues? that won't meet them, so they can be addressed as a change order in the construction versus well, get through construction anyway? and hit? I think on the front end there, yeah, mm -hmm. there should be plan review. We've sent some of the DRB materials over already. Mm -hmm. um, and so prior to that first meeting, which is one of the things proposed in the inspection scope, is to try to pull everybody together, get a sense of what's going to happen when, so the inspections happen at the right times. Um, they'll probably catch I mean, there's an opportunity to, to discuss some of those things that might come up, if, if there are any. It could go both ways, right? So we could allow D&K to write a certification <clears throat> of some sort. I don't know what we would want to see in it, but, and then Julie goes forward with her project and her stuff while the engineer reviews the plans and gives any major things that they see in it and then those topics could be discussed about whether that's a change order or well that's what there, I mean right? that's what I was wondering like something mm -hmm. along those lines because what it what is a certification worth if it's not going to cover any like if something does end up being wrong like who pays for what's wrong like that's the whole in my world that's yeah. the whole purpose of the certification is because yeah. then it kicks into their insurance to cover that because they certified it. Well, yeah, it's, it's really, in my mind, it's two different things, though. It's like that the, I'm just, I apologize if this has been unclear, but the, the stipulation that this meets the town standards is different than a technical error, right? Mm -hmm. The stipulation that it meets the town standards is, here's the town policies, there's a legal review, there's a technical review, we got a memo from the engineer that says, for these reasons, as Jenny said, it needs six of, needs seven of the seven, and and the DRB has met, you know, said it needs the, the the road, whatever. That's the the town saying, yeah, what you got here is acceptable. It meets our town standards. If you build it, if you build it correctly, then we will take up this vote to see if we adopt it at the end. That's different than saying. 
you know, the engineers are reviewing this plan and they found that, oh, you, you screwed up on a calculation or something, and this, this road base is not going to work this way. It says it's to be trans-standard, but there was a little calculation error. You've got to fix that. Well, of course, we're going to fix that, right? Because the road base you want to be accurate. So it's really two things. Where we feel we can't go forward with assurance, with good faith assurance, is if, we, if you can't say this meets, you know, take the engineer certification and memo and backup proof that this meets the town standard as it currently stands so that we can move on to the next step, which is build it, make sure it's done right, and know at the end that as long as we build it right, mm -hmm. then the road adoption has a shot. You know, there's, there's no reason to say no if we build it right. And, you know, you, you can't say no, as Jenny points out. You know, there's discretion in the system. We just need to be on good footing, or there's no point in spending all this money to start a process where we can't ever know that we are going down the right path. That it, does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think for me it's just knowing if, I mean, as a project manager that is not an engineer, I would want as much backup certification that things are being done right because it's expensive if something's done wrong to fix it. Exactly, and that's why the bond, we're putting up a full cost of the project bond. Uh, as well as all these the other portions, not yeah. the full project. Right. right. So I, I just, yeah, I mean, I've asked, asked, answered, I, but I hope people understand this, the precariousness of this if we can't get that good faith sort of leap together um, on this one issue of does it meet the town? road adoption standards so that we can begin the process. And of course, we will pledge to work together if there's any question about technical errors going forward or even questions about the design. And it's just that we need to start somewhere. And we need to start soon. Did you bid this? You already have a contractor ready to roll? Or you got to put it out to bid? No. It's, you have it's a road contractor? Bid. It was put out to bid quite a while ago. And we're holding contracts, which is part of the problem. Uh, because those prices can mm -hmm. change, and if those prices can change, that would be the third or fourth time we have to go back for more money. Who's and at some the point, road? they start. Who's they building start. the road? Um, uh, I don't. I can't remember the name of the contractor. I mean, it's uh, Nailer and Breen is our contract, uh, is our construction management mm -hmm. company, and they're assembling the individual subcontractors for the different parts. And so we have. I, I just can't. I'm sorry. That's our, you know, those those bids are at hand. The the schedule of values is done. The guaranteed maximum price is in. We're signing contracts like with 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 Nealer Bree within the next week, and the contractors have to be done within weeks thereafter. And if, if we can't get that, we are out of construction season, which would be, ex you know, then winter conditions get worse, and we're in, you know, more serious issues. So the contractor that we were working with, the engineer, had has looked at some of this, right? That's what they use to come up with their scope. Is it worth us just asking them if they found anything major in their review and and set the motion, motion so that we, if they didn't find anything major that they would bring forward, <clears throat> that we would proceed? And I still want to see them review these plans. I, I, mean, um, I, I really appreciate how you want to minimize any sort of risk to the town. I would just be afraid that there could be something in there which, <clears throat> which causes this to get delayed uh, just enough to make sure that, that this project goes away. And I just, it's, it's scaring me to think that that's a possibility. I think we need to, we've, I think we've got good faith from all parties. And, I think the the risk to the town at this point is is small enough that I, th I think we just need to we just need to let them do it and and know that they're going to work out work it out. Um, I I'd, I'd, I'd like to know what the wording is that we need to to make it go forward and and, and really just I'd like to just do it and, and and then if there's problems you know 
Everybody here wants to do the right thing. I think we'll, we'll work it out. If, if it happens, it's un, I think at this point it seems very, it, it's, to me it seems pretty clear that we're, we're unlikely to, to have the problems that we're trying to mitigate against at this point. This project I probably just, know too much, so <laughs> I'm just going to not, not agree there's, with you there. You know, there's, always, there's, always, there's always a chance that something can go wrong, but we're talking about, it, about the, the possible demise of a 15-year, $12 million project that is... But are we, if we take one day to call that consultant and just say, hey, I, did you notice anything glaring we should be nervous about that we can't just pick up in the construction inspection? If it was that, I mean, if it was that... It just seems like if it was if it was that glaring, we we, we wouldn't like. Uh, we shouldn't. I don't think we're talking about something that just. I don't know. Like, That's not how it works. That's unfortunately <laughs> sometimes Larry. <laughs> no. Unfo like we're we're at this point where we just we need to we need to we need to do this. Well, Trini, you were say starting down a path of is there a way we can like let them move forward over the next and over the next few weeks still have our third party what would that look like like how can we at least then like we'd be able to make the right. change before it that's before totally it goes to, to yeah completely to construction yeah. and tear it out and redo it i mean what we've heard though is that said like a num like a lot of eyes have been on this already and like the chance that there's something really like but shockingly sometimes there's out, like it just seems really super unlikely like that one more set of eyes is suddenly going to make all the difference. I mean, so if it's it could designed... It happen? I mean, sure, anything could happen, but it seems so remotely unlikely. And if there's a glaring technical error, that's going to be changed regardless, right? Um, it's, just, it's just a question of the, does it meet the town adoption policy? Yeah. And that isn't, you know, it's, it's been out there for months for people to read and, and comprehend and and I think um, you know the, the, the trouble with another day is that it's been many days and there's no clear resolution and we need some resolution I, I just I don't um, you know I just <laughs> we've been struggling to to stretch this process as much as we can and I, I just, I um, don't, I don't know that we can stretch it anymore. And I think we've, in good faith, we've produced everything that the town asks in its adoption <coughs> policy for us to produce. Um, and the problem is that, you know. So some of the problem we have is that we used to have a town engineer on staff. Yes, mm -hmm. and she reviewed these from the town's perspective for engineering. Right, and she left, mm -hmm. and Mark hasn't become an engineer yet, right. <laughs> and so we are SOL and we're bringing in a contractor, and so right. that was the reason for we need to bring in a contractor yeah. to look at the plans, and Understood. so we don't have anybody that's looked at these from a town perspective for maintenance, for upkeep, for replacement. Is there something in there that doesn't work with our existing like? We haven't had a lot of those type of of that type of review on the town side. You know, can we waive that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, I think you you can go with that different directions, but you know, I you do have discretion in, in either direction under our adoption policy. There's no requirement that you wait. There's no requirement that you do it. And, um, and I guess. We're asking that you, you take the certification from DNK and that on the town adoption policy is met. And again, it, like it's right here. It's all written. It's been researched very carefully. Um, and then let us build it. Um, so yeah, we are asking for a little bit of a loop of faith in the interest of getting a project done that will mean a great deal to the town. And I would hope it would be on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, just a minute, Mark. Jenny was. I was just going to say, I would hope that um, I can tell you that, or at least Julie, you better confirm this, but that's what I knew in the past that the town, the town um, highway manager, the previous town highway manager, met with 
Julie like went over the plan. We act, you actually changed some things in terms of how the roads were going to the it could accommodate the, the town plow. Um, am I right, Julie, about that? I'm like you, you had extensive. I, I thought you had extensive conversations with them to um, make sure. You know, I, I know we changed the, the orientation of the parking. And I, I can't. I'm not I, honestly who we, who requested what, but we. I was wrong. Yes. One was the one was the fire marshal, the state fire marshal, who had wanted a why. A I think it wanted it for a turnaround, um, and I thought you even. I do. I do remember you telling me about the conversations with, with them about plowing. I can't remember exactly what it was the town wanted. But, right, Mark. Um, I know there were those conversations with the town highway. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I can appreciate again what everyone's saying, and I, 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 I care deeply about uh, about our road crew. I care deeply about the manager, John. I know he works extraordinarily hard. The the amount of work that's been done to maintain the almost 200 miles of roads in our town by that team is extraordinary. And like, I have so much respect for John and I will sit down with John. We'll make sure that he is happy with those plans at every level. And, uh, but we, we, uh, we can't, we can't eliminate a, a project that covers almost four different chapters in our town plan in terms of what our taxpayers expect us to do. Uh, by a delay because of fear. Like this is a project that meets almost every single, like there's at least four chapters in the in the town plan that this project meets. And it's our obligation to do that. And this is a matter that can be done responsibly. Uh, we, Trevor is, uh, he's, you know, he understands the nature of these big projects. He's done tons of them over the course of his career. He's even stated that the design work is the less the lower risk on this project, not to say it's without risk. And I I'm I implore the, the select board to take a leap of faith. This much about everything and worry that much about that. So it's, it's contextualize a little bit. Well, I you know, I, I really I everybody's come to us uh trying to fix this need. And you know, I, I at first when I came here, I wondered if it was you know the tail wagging the dog, do we need the housing first or the jobs or the childcare? And uh, I'm convinced at this point that the, the over 200 jobs that are available in our community are not going to stick around if we don't start providing housing. That's how serious it is. We have companies that are going to pack up and leave if they can't find the people that they need to work in the, in the manufacturing plants. We have, you know, we have rotating. Uh, the businesses downtown often can't stay because they don't have people to come. And part of that is because we don't have a portfolio of housing in our community that supports multiple uh, types of jobs that are available, and we don't have it. It's that simple. The state is begging towns like us that have the infrastructure in place to take on projects like this, and we have it all. We have all the infrastructure in place. We have the capacity to do this. We have the utilities. We just need a leap of faith that the amount of momentum that will move from this project onto other projects for our town is going to be fantastic, and we've just hit a wall in terms of time. This is it. Yeah, I, I, I just want to say sort of again, like, I, this is such an important project. It, it would be an incredible tragedy if it was derailed at this point. The I don't think anybody's the trying risk, to derail the, it. Well, but the risk of delay and in terms of the possibility of derailment and making the project fail, to me seems much greater and much greater risk than for the town, than the risk the town would take on by, by agreeing with what Julie says she needs to, to move forward. I, th I think that you know, when we weigh those risks, we find that, yeah, we're not in an ideal situation, but given that we are in this situation, the risk that something bad could happen as a result of us deciding to move forward as we've been asked to, that that risk is far smaller than the risk of any kind of hurdle that we might put in place that might that might make this harder at this point. Um, I, I'd really like to see us um, meet, meet the request um, that, that we've gotten from RACDC so, so they can <coughs> do do what they they're, they're going to do um, at this point. So, 
So what's 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 the actual motion that we need so to, to move forward? Can we maybe blend a little bit? I've got a motion idea for you based on your conversations. I'll read that in a minute. But if you pair this maybe with if we can't get a formal process, I can ask the engineer, give them a timeline, have them send the response even if it's nothing major. Somebody with <coughs> hold anything up, it just the review happens and things go on as they go on. It's, nothing's contingent on that. That might be a blended approach to try to do it all. So the motion would be to accept the road designs as submitted and certified by RSADC's engineer for the provision that any issues identified during the construction inspection are reasonably remedied. And then you can add or take this part. And that failure remedy may impact the eventual consideration of adoption. Okay, I understand. Well, that's already in the... The construction that's management, a, I think we agreed to separate. I know, but I'm trying to stitch mm -hmm. everybody into their pants. Yeah. So if okay. goes <laughs> as long as it's clear which is which, the plant, the adoption <coughs> standard versus the construction oversight. And Jeff, could you just... Well, because we're trying to run these parallel. That's why mm -hmm. that's in there, too. The right. construction inspection is the way we are going to catch some of the design issues. Mm -hmm. So that's yes. why that's referenced in the proposed motion. Mm -hmm. But we'll also try to get it through that informal process yeah. on the time of the one. So that's the other what reason why they're both... So you there. catch a, you go through that process and you catch a design issue, mm -hmm. which had it been caught before, we wouldn't have said it met the standard. Who determines when it's met? When it, who determines when it's corrected to the point it meets the standard again? Presumably our engineer would be the one to say, here's the deficiency, they have a conversation between professionals about it, and then there'd be a remedy if there is a deficiency. <laughs> A motion to correct it, and then our guy or gal or person would say, "Yep, that's corrected," or "No, it's not." And we take scenario B as it comes. I don't, I don't know yet what that looks like. And then so it's either remedied or we have a different conversation. I suppose at that point would be how we try to work it. I think. Yeah, and to, to Trevor's, I worry this much about this versus this much about this. I worry very little about. <coughs> design issues being remedied because I think everybody, everybody wants to do that. But if somebody comes in later and so, you know starts arguing about the, the second egress or something, like we can't do anything about that at that point. That's just like it's not possible. So I don't think there's any question that we're gonna, you know, deal with design mm -hmm. standards in terms of technical design standards. It's about the specifics of the road adoption and and if something they say that they need or intend to meet is in their memo we got to meet that. If they say we don't need to meet that for whatever reason, whatever, that's what we're, you know, we're accepting that what they're, they're what they are proposing as, you know, what, what they had concluded is what's necessary to meet these standards. And that's what we're living up to. I see why that road adoption policy is on the priority list for this year. <laughs> Could we get Trevor to read it slowly one more time? <laughs> Can you do the training? Yeah. Yeah. Trevor? I, mean, I, don't know. I, know. I think I read it all, but I'm not sure if I like, trailed off at the end. Consider a motion to accept the road designs as submitted and certified by RACDC's engineer with the provision that any issues identified during the construction inspection are reasonably remedied and that failure to remedy may impact the eventual consideration of adoption. So maybe just a, a, like a some kind of explanation of what we mean by is any issues identified. I don't know if there's something to maybe put some parameters on that. Any? Well, I mean, I think if we could put the parameters, that'd be engineering standards, and we would. Well, no, I mean, just, I mean, just generally, a, any a, any you know any significant technical, technical issues. I mean. Like, so that it isn't, it isn't like, oh, well, we think now, like Julie's saying, all of a sudden, a second egress, if we can just find maybe some language that sort of says, you know, What that, constitutes a significant technical issue? Yeah, and, and that it's a, a technical issue rather than a policy issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so maybe any technical issues or any... I mean, the construction inspection is looking at the application. Okay. And so it is, I think, by nature, more technical and policy. It, it, it's also, I mean, 
I would even agree to add like our construction <coughs> issues because it's not just the design issues, it's how it's implemented. I'm yeah. Way beyond midfield here. Meet me somewhere. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what I would say. I'm good with are you tech technical technical issues. Technical is issues. That? Uh, or did you, are 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 the are you, 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 and then we get the, well, that's not really important, or that's not going to make any difference. And our engineer is saying, yes, it is. And, you know, you end up in this catch-22 because it's like, well, you approved the plan. And, yeah, we did, but with the understanding that we weren't going to get to comment on it by an independent. So this is a challenge. This is what we need. Like, I don't know. Cheney, this, I um, if I may, this comes up all the time in construction <laughs> meetings, and it's, you know, Julie, it's what I do for there. a living. I know, but I'm in these, and I see this stuff, and I, this is not just backwoods hick walking on the scene and saying, guess what? No. I've had experience with some of the parties you're using. I, I understand, and we have too, but they get resolved because we're going to work together to get them resolved, and I will, you know, we're gonna we're gonna work with the town because the town will work with us, and that's I think that's the only. I mean, that's the bottom line in a small community. Like, we've got to work together. And, and we're not, you know, but we can't get anywhere if we can't get here. And that's what I'm trying to say. That. I'm comfortable with that language, with the addition of the technical, and even or adding construction issues. Um, well, it's yeah. already construction, construction issues. It is already construction inspection. Is it? Is yeah. it? Okay. That's fine. During the construction inspection. Okay, I'm sorry about that part. So, yeah, so the addition of significant technical issues, I'm good with that. It would give us immense reassurance that we can go ahead with the other things, the engineering costs, the, the bond costs, and start signing up contractors. And we will work with you. We're not trying to do anything that's not the right thing to do. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm fine with adding technical if, if it seems like that is more appropriate for the situation. I mean, I would have been fine without adding that. Whole I'm clause, okay so. with that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, um, it's, I'm not going to ban, so I don't love it, but. Can you read it one more time? <laughs> but medium <laughs> speed this time? But even slower. Even slower. One point two. Yeah. Is it an accent in a different voice? Or, uh... <laughs> so am I adding? Do you, you want to hear it? Try it just, just, the, just how you brought it. Okay. Consider a motion to accept the road designs as submitted and certified by RACDC's engineer with the provision that any issues identified during the construction inspection are reasonably remedied and that the failure to remedy may impact the eventual consideration of adoption. Or it's around the any issues where you've had the... Any technical issues would be what we're talking about? I think it needs to remain any issues. Like, we're in construction at that point. We're not going to talk about mm -hmm. colors and things like that. It's actual construction. Because then you're going to argue over whether it's technical or not. Yeah. And it all should be at that and, point. And if, and if we really do think that all the engineers and the parties at work are going to, are really, are acting in good faith, then we shouldn't have a problem, I would think, over <coughs> what issues are important enough to merit, you know, working through. Is that? <laughs> so the extra words in or out? I'd like to hear from Jenny one more time. Out. Uh, here's the last thing. So I, I, I think it, in terms of the spirit of everybody holding hands, I think the way you've written it is fine, Trevor. And if that is how you do it, great. I do think the word technical might give CCDP a little more confidence, given that where they started off was telling us that we actually had to have the roads adopted for them to go forward. Um, so they don't have the statutory authority to do. They don't have the statutory authority to even. Yes. Oh the no, no, I know, but they were saying that they were going to establish that as a very condition. I, I do think I will tell you. I think your language will end up 
accomplishing everything because I do think everyone wants to work in good faith. I only say because I, I do think it might give CTP that one more layer that gets them closer to saying yes and us not having to go back and negotiate. And on the flip side, maybe then if they say no, Trevor, you give Trevor the authority to negotiate that word in if that makes them more comfortable. All right. So, oh dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, so moved. Wait, is it in or out? Out. Just so as written. As written. Do we, give, right. do we want to give Trevor the, the ability to negotiate a slight change in language if, if no. the comes back and says no. they have a problem with it? No, not yet. Not yet. We can, we're going to meet. Uh, well, oh, dear Lord. I mean, part of this too is like this how is many. To satisfy the investors, though, not BCDP, was my understanding. But it's, I mean, everybody, we just need to move forward. It's everybody's. Who does this the satisfy? investors. This, this satisfies us being able to move forward if we can close, which we're trying to close, to get to actually do the work. So, everybody, this satisfies everybody's concern that the road cannot start to be built, which is the first thing that needs to be built if we can't get through this issue. Yeah, I think at some point we like we can't keep negotiating back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Like it's taking up days and days and days mm -hmm. of work time. Um, so if they're not satisfied with that, then I don't know if they're gonna be satisfied with. I think that works. That, that gets us to the next step. You think this language will be acceptable? Yeah, yeah it's a big reassurance. I appreciate it. Okay. So, there is a motion on the floor, Larry. And a second that motion. Okay. <laughs> so motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Do we lose Molly? Uh, she's there. Yeah, she's there. I'm here. <laughs> I, I counted her. Did so. you vote? Thank you. No, did you vote? Are you a yay or an A? Yay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Present. I appreciate it. Well, it's 7.30. Um, we haven't gotten very far, so we, we lost so all our speed. Um, I'm gonna the so we have a renewal of the neighborhood designation area. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark's got his hand up. He's handled mm -hmm. some of this. And then Diane was here, who was the other party involved. So maybe Mark, if you want Yeah, I'm happy to to just kind of give you the idea on this one. Uh, the idea is to renew the NDA uh, as is. Uh, we have the opportunity to amend this at any point uh, over the next five years, which is when we're up for another renewal. Um, we, don't have, we don't have a project in the cards at the moment that's worthy of going in and redrawing the map, but um, I can assure the select board that we have the opportunity to do that in the form of an amendment going forward. Is there any changes from the prior version? Or is it exactly the way it was done the first time? Exactly the way we uh, was done when we spoke of, of it last time when we changed it for the Heading Church project. Um, so it, it is the same. Good, because I didn't get both versions out. It's like no time. <laughs> All right. So entertain a motion to renew. I'll move that we renew the NDA. Second. The motion and the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. UTV agreement and trailer purchase proposal. Mm -hmm. What you have in the packets is the slimmed down version from last time. So we took a lot of the detail stuff out with that to be done later. I'm trying to focus it mostly on ownership. I did wrestle a little bit with how to make sure we incorporated some of the 
original terms of the acceptance of ownership, so there are some remaining pieces in there um, for that, but I've tried to minimize them or refer them to other places. So like section four, for example, as a condition of acceptance, VFD will be tasked the creation and implementation of guidelines, et cetera, and so forth for the use. Did try to keep in the pieces on maintenance and replacement. We did obviously change them, take out references to the nonprofits and sort of just fold them into their general vehicle and maintenance program through the budget process and then leaves in the language that there's no obligation to replace the UTV, the trailer, any of those things, which was a, an important piece of the early conversation at least. And so now we've removed the stuff and they have to develop a policy and bring it back to the board to adopt, right, before they can use it. <coughs> Yep, prior to initial deployment. So then what's needed from us, no? We're just <clears throat> waiting for them to bring a policy. Yeah, in. well, what they wanted us to do was to separate it out. That was their request the last time and make this more about what the town, the document the town was going to use to accept the ownership of the two items while they worked on the policy side of it is how I remember it. So I think they gotta figure out how they're gonna move it too. Yeah. Well there are still those open questions. We want it, put it on the insurance rules. Park it in a nice safe place. <laughs> Wait for a policy. Are we ready to roll? Are we ready to roll? I'm more worried about this than the rep. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Any questions on it now that it's been pared down? Comments? <coughs> Excuse me. An opening? What's the plaque about a UTV? There's no way to move it. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so we've designed the mouse trap as requested. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> All right. So what, what's our action item on this tonight? I'm sorry. To accept it and authorize Trevor to sign it. <clears throat> okay. Um. Yes, on. I mean, at this point, it's just down <coughs> to us accepting it and them having to do a policy, mm -hmm. and they. It's parked until they do, okay. and that's and part of their policy. They have to address all the the training and the how it moves. Yeah. And the cost of insurance. I forget the dollar amount. When we looked at it way back when, it wasn't it's not substantial. So as it sits there insured, it's not crippling us financially. Until it finds its way somewhere, it's not supposed to. <laughs> and does it become property of the select board specifically? <laughs> it could before adoption and mm -hmm. you know, usage rules in there. It should be in the policy. <laughs> we'll need to take the course first, though. So. Okay. Amanda. Um, I get a background. <laughs> done. <laughs> the school let me come, so. Um, <laughs> All right, so what's our action here? Sorry, uh, to adopt, to accept this agreement. Is it an agreement at this point? It's an MOU. An MOU. Memorandum of understanding between two intermunicipal departments. Wow, there's only three letters, though. I know. MOU. Okay, so the motion should be to adopt, to, to approve, to approve, and authorize, and authorize. 
Trevor. The lucky one is Ryan. Okay, we'll do a trade on Trevor um, to sign the MOU. Okay. Yeah, that was my motion. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't even say some move to. Usually trick you all to sing, and then I say some move, but that time I took took her Somebody responsibility. Else. Yes. <laughs> You're growing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to become a secretary, you know, a little to a level. Does that mean a second? That was beautiful. I don't know. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Good. 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 Um, in part because we had additional flooding statewide, we moved to today. We were really lucky in the last one. The, the damage to road infrastructure in particular was... Were we lucky or were we prepared? A little bit of both. I think some of the work we've done through the grants and aid program that we did to respond and recover from last year's event, from the December events, that all helped. Um, especially when you think about Randolph Center, East Randolph, a little bit on the shady parts here, kind of in the southwestern corner, I guess it would be. Um, so culverts were upsized. The guys and gals and folks were all out um, clearing, making sure they, you know, that water had a place to go, um, removing debris if they could, doing any ditch work they could in the days before, so I think that helped too. So there was a little bit of intention, a little bit of the quirk of where the storm hit this time and, and how it hit and how hard it hit in different places so we did fairly fairly well thankfully um, and then from a year ago we are still in the FEMA cycle it's a little bit like watching the thing when you're downloading or trying to stream something spin but imagine you've watched it spin for a year some money's finally coming you've back you've just been act asked for <coughs> some level of response and involvement every now and then it goes back to spinning it spins and then it's, are you still watching this program <laughs> yes. um the federal highways money is going to come first for chelsea mountain road probably in terms of substantial amount that's closer to ninety thousand dollars debris removal with some of those other smaller real emergency response funds we're still working through some of the um, requirements on other projects categories they're closer than farther um, we've been closer than farther with them for a while um, the north randolph road projects are kind of um, we've gone out to bid and maybe bid responses those are a couple of the bigger ones that are left um, it's the bridge replacement needs a hydraulic study so we've had to go back down a request for qualifications that's out through back at the end of the week we've got to do the same thing with the major slopes and the big ones in the middle um, John and his crew are going to fix the slope failure header issue where Rogers Road comes in at the very top of the hill, and we've fixed the ones at the very bottom. Um, Stock Farm Road's completed. That one could get interesting in terms of how the funding fits based on the conversation we had the other day. Um, it had been accepted essentially into the July event, so at a 90 10 ratio with our share you know, percentage of that 10%. And there was some talk about rolling that backwards and trying to make more uh, lines between what happened on public, you know, within the right of way versus on private property, but you can't do that project unless you do it all in a lot of ways. So that's pending, but um, that's a big one. Thankfully, the cost for that came in a lot less than what has been feared for, for a while on that one, given the scope. Um, you know, at one point, folks were thinking maybe closer to like, Three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars, and ended up being one forty, one fifty, I think, total. Um, I had to look at that over the other day. And then, so there's that, and then the Lincoln Avenue. It's pretty narrow. Where the town piece came in, and the culvert's broken off. That part can be fixed, and some armoring around where the culvert exits. Um, that's what FEMA had approved after a couple of site visits. It's a pretty defined area, but we've got to do an RFP, bid that out, and hopefully get that work done. Um, that will take the three, sort of the three remaining, three largest ones. Those are the pathway there on the bridge. I think is going to take one of the takes, and the same thing with the slopes. Um, the other one should gonna, hopefully conclude after we've awarded it. Should come together pretty quick. Yeah, we're not going to get the stream permit 
that we need to do anything on those until we get a the hydraulic study. Yeah, and then they want an engineered solution, not just uh, yeah. filled back with a typical. Yeah. DEC added that wrinkle to the North Randolph Road with the slopes. I mean, with both the bridge and the slopes, but the slopes in particular. So it's satisfying that concern along the way. December, all the work's obviously done. Um, it's just providing the, the right paperwork. So um, that event, 75, 25, most of it was road material related. We came in total expenditure. We came in the 125 to 150 neighborhood, so not as big, obviously, as July, but not insignificant. Um, so I think we'll be in the FEMA process for a while longer. Um, certainly, with the three projects remaining, and certainly as long as the North Randolph Road ones are open. So it's we're getting familiar with it, I guess. If there's a benefit. Are they talking at all about why they're holding up funding on some of those? I know they have come back like two and three times for the same data that's been published or been given to them. And Judy's been keeping folders handy so that when they ask for stuff for time three, four, five, just slide it over and can I make you another copy? Um, so there's that piece going on. They haven't sort of said what we seem to. We've been a few different transitions in FEMA staff. <coughs> on our That's a big issue. Second PDNG for July, but other people around that person have changed, and that sets you back. Not quite to the beginning, but now you've got to make the case. The stock farm, we worked with the PDNG and the person above them, and then they went to leadership, and there was an understanding, and then that person comes out, and somebody moves up but keeps it. So now we're, it feels like we're starting that case making over again with that one. And then on the December one, we've already had two of them, and we've had the declaration since what? Or April was the first sit down meeting, March, April. So. Mm -hmm. so I don't think that's helping. And I've heard that feedback from others in local government as well. It just yep. has we have it at the state level, too. And certainly for those with different damage scopes, thankfully, ours was what it was. You know, we didn't have downtown flooding, we didn't have the amount of private property damages, that's another staff. But. but to hold the bag on funding for that for a year is a little bit of a There have been more and more news stories about solvency and total funding available. And they have never said that, but you wonder at some point storms keep stacking up here and elsewhere, or event, weather events, I guess, for mm -hmm. Quite possible. Um, and so, yeah, we'll get on to yours in just a minute. We've got a town portion, and then there's a whole different portion that's a nightmare. Um, so, um, on the other topic, one of the challenges we're having at the state level is getting them to take an official position. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the Stock Farm Road, and, th and they did that, did they ever give us anything? Their other famous thing is everything's verbal and not put anything in writing, and then you have nothing to go back. Welcome to the FEMA nightmare. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, we can't legislate anything in Vermont on that one, but they don't put anything in writing. They come in and they meet with you, and you talk it all through, and then they leave, and mm -hmm. you get an agreement, and then they disappear. The new people come in, and, and there's nothing there. Yeah, there are multiple conversations about it and then we've got we had the approval of the landowner but what came back the other day was well do you have an easement so no we need the approval of the pen rods in the case of stock or no we got that prior construction right we wouldn't get an easement because we don't want to permanently be maintaining right. it so then that could be the push pull there in terms of well you know when i talk to the higher ups they really want it this way whereas before it was you know, just give her make sure you've got permission to be there but go ahead um, if you reach out to BEM and ask them, they'll help you with with that issue because you don't need an easement. We go on people's property all over the place to get to the railroads mm -hmm. to do it, and all you need is that form that gives you permission to be there. And they'll help uh, sort that out with them. Sometimes they're in the calls or in the meetings and. Sometimes or not. 
I mean, if you got yeah. a few people covering a lot of grounds, I think it's as simple as that. Okay. And so, um, on the regular emergency response stuff, that's that's everything, right? We don't have anything else. Those okay. are all about, are all in terms of the purely town, town-owned infrastructure, so no one in okay. town-owned land currently. Joyous. Um, so then if we look at the challenge where we have, uh, mostly over in the Lincoln Avenue area, we have the one property that's in the process somewhere with FEMA and has been there for years for the buyout. And then we have a few others that where the bank is washing out and you've had meetings with the state and FEMA and whatnot on that. So we just touch on Yeah. And we talked to FEMA in the initial there. response to the storm and on some of the site boots. We've been out to the where the colder broke off with two different site inspection teams. So we talked about how to define that scope, what the project could be, what FEMA would find reimbursable. And that's what gets baked into that project. The rest of it, they defer either to other programs or so it's not part of what you can do during this disaster. And then there's the hazard mitigation grant program, which they extended the deadlines. And so then we asked again about that, sort of just saying, here's the potential project area. Here are the issues that are happening. You know, what's eligible given the mix of private and public ownership given the changes in slopes given the shape of the river um, essentially collecting information on what's eligible is there a project in there that could move forward and at first it was it doesn't seem like there's an eligible one because there wasn't some sense that it met criteria I think that program's been trying to steer people to buyouts and so on the league sort of hawked it again today it's a I have a focus program, but they do have other categories listed, so we asked about Jeff and I had this conversation today. It says it's a mitigation grant, and so you can take mitigation activities, and then you dig into the mitigation activities, and they limit them to some extent. Um, but there's a lot of stuff you got to do before they'll determine it's eligible, right? There's a whole... Yeah, they like, hinged on the cost-effectiveness question, and we got into erosion rate calculations and some of that. So they are looking to see if whatever you put in or do is the... <coughs> Cost effective. I don't really know how they measure that. I'm guessing it might be value of what you protect versus what you put in. But um, so, what they laid out as a narrow path for a potential project there was to actually take a step back and do sort of that planning, scoping, the engineering study and apply for that. And then, if that's awarded, that determines those elements. What can be done? What are the costs? Is it cost effective based on the criteria? Somebody can do those erosion rate calculations, and then what you have is some sense of what's possible, and some sense then of is it eligible or not, um, what's the total cost, and then there's the potential to apply if there's money, whenever it happens during the next round. Though, what's nice about this round is that it's the state's put in enough to so that there's no local match. So the scoping study, at least if we went forward with that as a project, say is covered. Unless there's that same kind of commitment in the out years, and it's hard to tell at this point. It's a 25% match, and you're into how do you make that? And I don't have any idea what that project would be, but that's a long, potentially long area. And so the just the pre-application, right, mm -hmm. to say we're interested is due in August. Yep, yeah, that's the one on the. 16th. And then they haven't given the date for the actual application yet. Right. Not that I've seen, but I haven't. I don't. I know haven't if you've seen, seen it either. Just that that's the next step, and then they go through an award cycle, and then you can hire the consultant to do all the work that they want before they'll determine if the project's eligible. Mm -hmm. But in talking with Jaron, the rip, the anything we did on that bank isn't going to be able to be very high. Right, they're only going to allow us to go up a certain height. So I would assume this study, if we did it, would tell us whether that's even going to have a benefit. Right, because you're losing it at the top some. You're losing the bottom, which is making the top drop some. 
of course the culvert adds to it and then you're gonna add this weight into a sandy soil like it just feels like there's an ugly mix there and there's nobody really there's no real answer at this point it feels like we're just being told go down this path and we go down that path and then they say oh whoops you're not eligible <coughs> but here apply for this planning grant over here and see what you can get out of that process and maybe we'll find something eligible it's we're not getting that solid and is there something we can do or is there not something we can do like what is the and I'm sure the folks living up there are feeling the same thing probably worse there because they're thinking we aren't doing anything we're you know cornering up every person we can talk to to try to find an in and you get the you get the news reports you're sending them to us saying hey there's this money available and then we chase it and they oh, no, say I get it. I've oh been no there. maybe you're not or no, oh you gotta it. go back and do this and it's like I work for transportation just like I you know, so I know how it I works. Know. And you work with the rivers people and yeah, I'm, the I'm ANR all. side and then you got the VEM side and you got the FEMA side. Like it just feels like I mean, you gotta stabilize the total still. It's pretty much what it comes down to. I mean obviously the pipe's gonna keep breaking off, it's acting like fire hose, keeps dropping, the side slopes keep going in. So until a bunch of Volkswagen beetles get thrown down along the river all the way up to probably past the house and then a couple on the other side and at least get it 20 feet up, lay the slope back for the neighborhood. Obviously, the sandy loam conditions are everywhere along the whole river there, the whole neighborhood. Yeah. And the whole neighborhood's going to go eventually. It's to give in if nothing's done. So, But to sit there and have the, the pipe just keep throwing stuff out and everything just keeps caving in, it's going to work its way back to the road. It's common sense, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you're, I, I don't know what you can do. I mean, you can't just sit there and put a stone line ditch all the way down to the total slope, even though the pipe's up here because it's just going to keep scouring on the bottom and keep going backwards. So, how do you stop the backwards? I mean, this then you run this horrible. It's ever happening everywhere in the state. You know, and we're just a small fraction of it. You know, I, I get the big picture, but being it's the town's pipe, we got to do something about it to stop it. You know. Then you run into FEMA saying, "Well, you can do this narrow." In and so you know, who knows? You know, right. but why go throw money in? Like you said, why go? Through, FEMA might look at it. Why go throw money at this when? It's just going to go away if the product, if the scope's not big enough. It's you're going to be throwing money away. Yeah, which is what we ran into in the stock firm, right? Oh, yeah, if you didn't it go to where the water yeah. started in, yeah. it was just going to go right behind it and yeah. undo it all. Yeah, and they agreed with us on all that that day yeah. when we walked them through it all. And now they're saying, "Oh, wait a minute, that's on private land. We mm -hmm. talked about all this, and that's what we're running to down there too. Is that's yeah. all private? Yeah, that's not yours." And, and my take was, let's give it all to A and R. Then it's not private anymore. They can have their river edge, and then they can protect it. Yeah. But and they're going to scream, "We got no money!" As always. I know. I know. Yes. Only agency of transportation has any money. Can you Nobody do else that has. for us? Yeah. And we always do. Then they come back and bite us. But it's nothing against that. They only get their job to do too. Yeah, but it, it is frustrating. I don't. I don't know what the answer is here. I'm fine with uh, putting in the pre-application mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know that we're going to be looking for this planning money but i don't know how you set a value to that because some of what they talked about was doing borings like, how do you do borings that height that's a deep boring well i mean borings are ineffective but you I mean, can it's see all it. sandy loam yeah, you can I see mean, it just look hey I mean, you need a fresher one you're not going to be math it's all sandy loam you know i mean you know some say oh you're going to put sheet pile in and this and that i don't think yeah sheet pile will work but it'd be awful expensive and then uh, how are you going to build? I mean, it's just like taking a management house out. How you you can't get down there to take the house out. So I don't know what the buyout requirements for that are. Just throwing crazy stuff that it, it's like everything you said. There's just so many requirements, and everybody's always working their way up the chain with FEMA and everybody trying to figure everything out. And nobody really has any answers. And just you know, it's it when is what it you, is. When you think you have the answer, they leave, and somebody else comes in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, all I can say is that the town applies. For that that grant stuff, and you, you got to scope it. If that's a route you got to take, that's a route you got to take. There is the not there's no other choices. Yeah, the borings have to be, I think, at the bottom of the slope. Like how, how far are we going to go down to be able to key in? Yeah, and so how are you going to go down there? Yeah. I mean, the only way you'd be able to do it is take about where the pipe is, lay it down like a road, and lay it all the way down and go down there. Because last time the pool is not going to let anybody get anywhere, where you're going to have to come off the side of the state, off the 12A. So we might be able to arrange that. 
It's possible. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, have. but I don't know how you put a dollar value to it. That's where I'm struggling. Like, yeah, I mean, that's good uh, my... there's no consultants that I'm aware of that specialize in meeting DK these DK has been terms. doing, I hate to bring DK up, but I've been working with them on uh, Marlboro Brattleboro on the uh, Whetstone Brook. So mm -hmm. they've got some insight on that. Um, Chris Lathrop mm -hmm. is the lead on that, their engineer there. So. But this would be to meet these criteria, this criteria of that specific yeah. funding source, which yeah. we is new. So yeah. it's who's going to pay for the borings? Well, that's what the grant will do, supposedly, okay. right? If you can find a way to get in it, mm -hmm. you know, if we have a helicopter that could come in and, and do that, <laughs> wouldn't it be? This is you going to buy when I go yeah. away here for a little bit? Yes. We just changed that one. We just you know, and, and as for the pipe thing, I, you know, it goes on vacation tomorrow. You so. could probably <laughs> lay some of that down to get to the end of the pipe and put one of those, you know, those uh, flood pump bags, the rollouts, mm -hmm. like the rollout pipe, put a collar on it and send it down close to the toe slope. That will help the thing caving in. You know, creating a ravine and slow things down for a little bit. So that, that one, I mentioned that a long time ago to John, but everybody was just, yeah. you know, there's priorities everywhere. And that's, we can look at that as part of the FEMA eligible project area because that is part of that July scope. So that, that little piece, we do have a pathway. Yeah, what would you have to do? Put a 90 on it to get at the turn before you put it into a softer pipe? Right, you wouldn't I mean, force of that onto the pipe. Well, it, all it is is a hose clamp goes around the outside mm -hmm. and it just but rolls out and goes down. You know, and just at least that it'll keep it out straight. down. But now that the trees and stuff have fallen down, uh, it's taken the uh, guy wires down to go down the landing in between the two poles. I don't know how it didn't pull them both down, but you know, it took those <coughs> what 200 foot span and just put it down 400 feet and it hasn't broken yeah, yet. So the only the guy the guy line's the only thing holding one of them pulls up right now that I know of. And it's about five feet from you know, where it's drilled in the front guy wire because it was on tangent. That's gone and it's just hanging down the bank. So something's gotta be done at least temporarily. I think that's a temporary fix until all this possible funding can go through to come up with whatever that comes up. The culvert with. we have it, right? Like the culvert itself mm -hmm. they're willing to pay the to figure out how to put some type of rock protection down through there. But you're right, the problem is, how do you get the rock to stay there? Yeah, and that just sand gonna, is just gonna follow gravity. I mean, that's what Sandy Loam does. So it you're floats. gonna have to key it's it sand. in. It's at the beach. That's so why they do beach restorations all the time. Yeah. It was pointed out of both site inspections. And says, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's a great answer. Mm -hmm. No answer, but yep. Mm. Do we have, we won't be able to use the typical to um, line that up through there. Are we gonna have to have a engineer or somebody design what we gotta do there? Cause you can't just dump rock over that bank. It won't be there. We haven't been required to. There's a solution FEMA said the fund that's in the scope of work whatever the acronym is, but that's in the grants management system It's the identified scope and cost. Based on, we got an estimate way back after the initial storm, probably within the four to six weeks of it, yep. to try to quantify costs and materials and all that. We might have to just try it. I mean, doing nothing isn't getting us anywhere. Yeah. You know, and with the trees falling down in front of right where the pipe goes now, that's going to have to move it out of the way. You're not going to be able to do anything. That's an easy one. It's how do you get the rocks to go the right place down over that? That well, I would. There's a channel there. You move. The pipe's created a channel. All right. I don't know of anything else out there. That's, uh, um, I haven't seen it. Anymore. And then the challenge with the buyout up there is that you go with the appraised value on the day of the event, right? Yeah. When the risk hits yeah. and it's, there's only a certain number of appraisers, I believe, that can do those. But then, you know, 
you're right with the comment you made, like you're in a bad market, so you get bought out for low value and then you gotta go try to find something. It's not a good scenario. You know, like I said, it's, it's eventually gonna let the whole neighborhood out, but yeah. nothing's done correctly, as you would know. Yeah. You know, if it's not stone line down bottom, you can already see with the 500 year storms we get coming now. You know, everybody keeps talking climate resiliency, but until you start armoring your side slopes, nothing's going to change. Yep. I think the challenge is how do you armor that one? BW buses, a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Tow it in down in the bottom and then make sure you go up 20 feet from ordinary high water mark and lay the slope back a little bit or at least let it go on its own if it does go on its own. But you're still going to have to lay it back just to get down there and do the work. Unless you're going to come Your off the wall basin. Your challenge is access. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you. It's a, it's a tough one. Yeah. It's tough all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. Engineering stuff. Okay. With all the solutions. Well. At a cost. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So I think right now the only step I can see is we can put in the pre-application. And try to identify, you know, um, I'll do some snooping around with some of the consultants that we use and see if any of them have ever done anything like that, where they have to do the plan and all that. I know Du Bois and King and then Kenny Off Mall had one down there, um, was it off of five, Woodstock? Mm -hmm. But then we had to go way down bottom and then way the heck up that side slope. If you recall that one, and I don't know who engineered it, but I could find out in two seconds mm -hmm. and send you an email. Okay. And like I said, DK has, and that's true, Chris Lather, that we're working with now. One of our own deflector. Okay. Well, I can, I'll. Hunt it down. I'll find somebody and we'll see if we can get some rough cost estimates so we know what to put in the application. Okay. Not from a perspective of them giving us a scope and whatever because we don't want them to eliminate themselves, but see if we can't get some type of a, an estimate. That's all you can do? Yeah. I get it. it sucks. That's the way it is. It's like. It sucks. If there wasn't a pipe there, we'd have to eat it ourselves <coughs> and take the bio, their choice, right? Yeah. So, I get it. We all get it. Yep. Okay. Let's see if I can find a dollar value. Send me the name of that one. Who did Woodstock? All right. Yeah. Um, okay. Bond anticipation note for the North Wells Reservoir Project. We just paid off the prior one. What's proposed is it's not an extension. It's, an, it's a separate bond anticipation note, but essentially it's to provide an additional 12 months. Some of this is tied to the EPA stat grant. It is expected to be farther out there. It will be tied specifically to the tank. Um, the project's going to be done substantially complete by August 6th. Is what's in the contract and we're on pace for that. It's already, the tank's already filled. We've done some training on the controls, so we're much closer to the end than anywhere else. Um, and then the SRF loan for a million and a half that we got from the state, that paperwork came in a lot later than it was forecasted to based on, I mean, just everybody's having staffing issues, and that was the primary reason for that. But that was probably a good six months later. And so that original ban timeline, some of it was eaten up, waiting to have anything to draw against. Um, so this provides us a little extra protection. If we don't use it, it sits there. We just pay the interest costs, which is what we just did to pay off the prior one. We essentially have to make what they would consider that first principal payment. That's why the amount to be borrowed is the 1462 versus the 15. Um, through the water reserves and a few other sources that we already have. So these would be the documents to authorize that ban. We could pay it off early with no penalty. That would obviously be the goal. The way we'd like to stack it is if any of that's remaining, use it for bridge funding. 
we pay back from SRF and then we hang on to it and figure out what the EPA timeline is. We have to do anything any different. But in the in-between, the way our funding stack goes is it's the SRF loan first, and there's actually the $450,000 Northern Borders grant that we draw, and it does leave that EPA stack grant last, and that's tied specifically to the tank at this point, which is an easy way to set that up. It's a little extra protection. And they calculated the payment based on turn of the loan, so that's why it's take one five or take it divided by thirty or forty I'm sorry. And then they wanted us to make sure to put in a motion to authorize because we don't have a clerk treasurer or the treasurer piece just to you know that's functionally what would happen. It should be okay if we just call out the assistant clerk treasurer. You could even say any of our assistant treasurers because we named a few of them and now they're street legal have been for a little bit. So then there's at least explicit authorization for someone else to sign. So I was there the other day and they said there's no other clerk authorized, only treasurers. Do we just need to educate them that they're all clerk treasurers or? Henry did the paperwork on him. What was, that was, yeah. I'll double check it up. Said Mary's the only authorized clerk. <laughs> and then that didn't make it in the next day to get his fall we did a few more but <laughs> you might want to just that. clarify that yeah those, those <coughs> forms then, were completed I saw the completed form but I don't know so you need a motion to to adopt the resolution adopted. authorizing bond anticipation borrowing from Union Bank in an amount not to exceed one four six two five hundred for tax certificate for bond anticipation borrowing and the municipal bond post issuance compliance procedures. I can try that again slower because I bungled it. But. And authorize additional signatures. And then I don't know if you want to do it as the same motion and roll it in, or you want to do it as two separates. But yeah. Let's just go crazy and make it one. Yep. So little. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And then before you go, we'll have that and some other stuff to sign. Paving <coughs> bids. <coughs> These are back by the end of June. Um, the three respondents, Springfield Paving this year again was the low bidder, 315,990, as I mentioned in here. We projected closer to 412. Some of that is the way we build sort of our paving assumptions. We were assuming the cost of asphalt would go up by about 5% from the prior year. That's been our assumption in the last few years. Um, that's really the difference between the bids and what we've got the tonnages. Um, and some of the other calculations are all pretty similar, both between Springfield paving, paving and Blacktop. There's a little bit of a difference in tonnage and a little bit of cost per ton between the two bids. Fresh quote, I think it was a tonnage issue, if I remember right. And it was, there was a lot of asphalt included in that one, um, which is why that's double the other two. And so we plan on that. We've got 156,000 in a Class Two paving grant to put toward Beanville Road. Um, so we'll have some extra capacity to consider other options if you want. We've done that in years past when bids have come in less than anticipated. John and I have worked up a list of there were some extras. Um, Church Street last year was one we were able to squeeze in through the combination of some excess pavement and a little bit of capacity. So we do have a resident of Fail Street that would like us not to pave that. I'd like to say there's more than one resident of Fail Street <laughs> and they found me. I would have a hard time believing that there's 11 and a half inches of pavement on Field Street. That's a lot of pavement. It runs counter to what we've found everywhere else where the sub-bases are on the skimpier end. Yes, so the request is to, I think, reimagine Field Street. <laughs> to like just take everything out, put everything back in properly. It's kind of a request, it seems like. 
which you is don't have the money big, to do that. Right, it's a big request. And so they said if you can't do that, then you'd rather us not to pave it, right? I'm I mean I went by there the other day and I saw a curb that was that high above the pavement, like a normal or close to the normal yeah. curb. So I, I was a little surprised to hear that the road was so high, you'd think it would have, the road was really 11 inches thick, it would have buried, long buried the curb, but. Well, they um, built the sidewalk above and beyond 11 inches of pavement is the story. So they want to redo the curbs and the sidewalks and everything. Is that the, what you're taking? I you take think so. Yeah. And the road right now meets the other two streets on either end at a fairly level grade, so if you reduce the depth and you may not want to repeal the skateboard ordinance because that'll be a popular spot probably. <laughs> <laughs> it also will be the only road in that area that hasn't just recently gotten. Yeah, we've got a little loop on um, you know, like Dudley Fails or Dudley and the hey, hey, comes around. The hell? Hey, I was hit rhymes, I think. Yeah. That little loop would be the only piece on this side in this chunk. I think we have to do. Is the concern like the driveway connections or? That and that there's water going into some of the houses' basements because the road mm -hmm. has been built up so high and the houses have been there for so long that the houses are sitting below the road level on the one end towards summer snow, towards what's on the south side of the yeah. Total reclamation will be across, so you have to make sure it ties in to the streets on either side. Uh, uh, we haven't scoped that out. I don't know what it takes. I think it would be it shouldn't be our worst project, but it wouldn't be <coughs> substantial either. Unless you I mean, the road. But is this is requiring some milling, right? It's it going to mill and then do an overlay. These are all overlay. Yeah. So we wouldn't be increasing the height of the road there. You may. You might by a half inch. Okay, retain is down. It, is it possible from for us to spec it so that they make sure they don't increase the height of the road? It might be a different scope if we're milling everything off to a certain sub base so that we can come back with new pavement. Well, if you mill off an inch and a half, only put an inch and a half of pavement back on, I think it's what we're saying about instead of doing the typical. Yeah, be a little more expensive. It's a short okay. and also, frankly, excessive for for Dale <laughs> Street with the volume. The point kind of zero eight. Is. Yeah. Yeah. That road is. Pretty proper. Like it's definitely would take a little bit of work, I think, to even just get this. Have you walked over there recently? Definitely buckles quite a bit. So I think it's going to be a little bit of work to even like kind of just grade it down, anyways. We've found like that us. too. That's where it's nice to have the excess capacities because we've had to work in some additional depths just to get things level. Lincoln and actually had a lot more than it was <coughs> originally supposed to, just to help level stuff out. And sections of East Bethel Road needed it too. So we carry, it's nice to carry a little extra capacity just in case. In making it work, we need more material. Um, so this, the project, the way it was bid, how much, what, what are we milling? It's just a shim. I don't even think there's oh, there's no milling on that one? How are you milling and then doing the shim? In an overlay, is all it is. Inch and a half overlay. I, I guess my preference would be to leave it in, but maybe have a conversation with them so they know, like, we're not going all the way down and do a whole new sub base and whatnot. That that would be years in the making. Like they either get, if they don't, if we don't do this, they're gonna that street will. Stay the way it is for a while. I would. Well, it becomes a, a reclaim. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. It'll go so what happened line. to Church Street over just a few years once it started to really go? It start like, especially with our new winters of our with freeze and thaw cycles. Like, once once you have a bunch of cracking and that's of any depth, it just doesn't take much to really make it a, a really bad. But so how many of them, how many houses versus how many people didn't want it? 
Did they all not want it? Um, I only know of two houses, I guess. Um, there's claims that no one wants it, but I don't know if that's completely true. I did not talk to everybody on the street. I've only heard from the one. I know. Yeah, that's all I've heard from in the same email. Um, okay. I mean, I think it's worth leaving in there, and then if you hear from more of them that they don't want it, then just remove it and do somebody else. Is it is it possible for us to, if I'm, tell me if I'm wrong, I think there's a curb on one side, but not on the other side of the street, is that? There's a sidewalk on one side, not the other side. There's a curb. curb on the other curb on the sidewalk side. Mm -hmm. Is there a curb on the... I think there might not be a curb on the other side, but I'm just wondering in terms of drainage, like if if there's a curb on one side, if it would be possible for us when we go to cave it to help direct the water to the curb side to get it to go out the way we'd like water to go out instead of I'm wondering I wonder if a lot of it is like yeah, like there's one drain, but there's like there's re like the road recesses down below it on either side. That would so be reset as part of this. Right, yeah. And so they may find that the drainage is oh. good when it's done. Yeah, so I think like the road is so crazy that it's not draining at all that make sense. properly. And those items but, are in the bid to be reset and broken risers and things so repaired and fixed. So there's a certain amount of that that certainly is going to do it too. Okay. Well, but hopefully, it should help a bit. If, Eight housing I mean, it yeah. could help a lot. I mean, if, if depending on how it's set up, I know some situations where water bypasses, a, you know, a, a stormwater drain and creates all sorts of problems someplace else. And curb on one side of the sidewalk as of yeah. fourteen. I don't think we've changed it since then. Yeah, I'm not seeing a curb on the other side. So yeah. Um, yeah, it seems like the ones down by the funeral home are the ones that are complaining that there's water coming into their houses or could potentially come into their house. And by the funeral home on the non curb side? Both sides. On both sides. Yeah. Um, so two houses on both sides of that end of the road. Well it's not it's not jumping the curb. Oh, it's definitely not jumping that curb. My children have tried to jump that curb on so, their bikes. Nothing's <laughs> jumping that curb. So it's gotta be water coming in from somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Through a driveway though. Have the drivers, yeah. They would match the track. Yeah, I mean, it could just be happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could. Who knows? Through the driveways or somewhere else. I have an old house where two roads border it, and at some point, running three or four days after an event from water that's not standing anywhere. So who knows? So we want to leave it in there for right now. I would what say you could authorize if you want is just us to put the bid in a total amount, the Springfield paving, and then we'll adjust it if you're comfortable with that. It's an awful lot of authority in John and I see I am afraid of that. I'm not finding that too scary. A little juice now and I'm muck. Let's you pay whatever you want to pay. You. But the, um, <laughs> the list that you had um, came to the 315, but <coughs> what was, the, what was we, the amount that you had available for the budget? 12. Yeah, about 412. And that plus projected reserve transfers would carry us out to 27, 28 before we get upside down. If we don't put more money in or costs don't change or whatever it is. So in terms of when you forecast out the year. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable giving you some flexibility in terms of, like, what makes sense to do on Fail Street, and then, mm -hmm. depending, or either way, that if we have additional funds to try and squeeze in some other paving. So authorized paving by Springfield paving of up to 412000 Yeah. Town manager's discretion. That's what we budget for and we can afford. So moved. Second. Are you for quick? 
<laughs> is there a, I don't think I've even done the same. Though. Is there a way they can like just double check that the drains are like below? Because sometimes like the drain ends, you know, like when they. Oh, it's not right now. It's higher than the room. Yeah. That's yeah. so that's so, part yeah. of the problem. So, yeah. I think that's part of what Trevor would. Really Looking okay. to John is to They're going to reset them as part yeah. of the paving project. Yeah. 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 Are they are. Okay. They're within a, it's specified. It's an old, it's based off an old Marty document. So then, so then you're saying that the, that other Hale Street to Dudley Street loop would be, a, would be a contender for additional, if we have additional funds to, to go through there? It could be. We might see in terms of do we need some of the capacity to cover things we aren't anticipating, so mm -hmm. we need a little more pavement here, there, or elsewhere, especially as we finish off Beanville and we do Beanville and finish off East Bethel. Um, and then it might be after that. That's what, sure. yeah, that's, that's, what that's, that's, yeah. That'd probably be how we'd work it is see what the capacity is and then add. But <coughs> so I guess what I'm saying is if after doing the work that we have listed here, if we had still remaining capacity for funding in terms of funding, <coughs> yep. that would be the project that you would take some of this to. Could be, yeah. yeah. Makes some sense to finish off one whole side. Um, trying to remember, John mentioned a couple other areas. We tried to bundle them for proximity a little bit too. I mean, obviously, East Bethel and Hales aren't next to each other. Do you, you get a chance to check in with the paving company, maybe, or John, about, about that little stretch of Potential, <coughs> potential pedestrian space between the railroad tracks and, oh, and no, I have Pleasant Street. I don't know that chance yet. Yeah. What I'm talking about is um, as you're walking down, walking down Pleasant Street towards the railroad tracks from downtown, when you when you cross the railroad tracks, you cross Railroad Street, and Railroad Street is dirt. And during the summertime, it's not bad, but in the winter time, um, there's often a big Either it's a big mud puddle or a big icy puddle, and then you have pedestrians who are walking way out into Pleasant Street to go around it to get on the sidewalk, which is on the other side of Railroad Street. And so, so we don't own if, Railroad Street. What's that? We don't own we Railroad don't, Street. No, but we could make our street like three feet wider and just basically have a, a, a wider paved section through yeah, there. to the right of way. Would be yeah, to the right of way. Or right you can way. coordinate, you know, we can get to, in with New England Central to that coordinate we, that well. It just, it just seems like a really unsafe spot for folks. Yeah. Um, people come down the hill sometimes really fast. And there are people, pedestrians in the middle of the road. And we started working on a agreement to take that section of over and they get died of loneliness. Mm. <laughs> anyway, I just thought since we have all this equipment downtown being pavement, it would be a very, <laughs> it would be a very small addition to the work that's already do, mm. done. And, and you know, even if you know, <coughs> you know, it, it probably needs like a more permanent solution, but maybe something at least that would last a few years at a small cost would be, would be really nice to have in place for this coming winter. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Authorizing water wastewater capital project. So Chris jumped on. He is way up past his bedtime, I think. <laughs> <laughs> there. But he's a good sport, um, so he's on. He can run you through some of the project details. We'd hope to put together some more detail for you in advance, and I apologize, but um, he'll definitely catch you up in a hurry here. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? We got you. All right, perfect. Um, so anyways, the manhole out behind, there's a sewer line that runs from Forest Street over underneath the high school. And then there's a series of manholes out back of the high school by the tech center, by the auto shop. The manhole closest to the auto shop has started to fall in. It fell in towards the end of the school year, covered it with a plate just to get them through the end of the year. Um, once in looking at it, once kind of school died down and stuff, it's a very old design manhole that uses um, basically concrete cinder blocks instead of a full concrete structure that is all stacked together. 
the upper part of those blocks are starting to come down and upon further inspection it looked like as you start pulling them apart they're just going to continue to fall apart as they fall <laughs> down in we've had so the initial thought was, was to work on a project to replace the manhole we inspected the sewer line between the that manhole and the next one up just on the other side of their greenhouse out back of the school and the line is in very poor condition um, we've had a lot of issues with that line over the last several years so the thought process was the school is already hiring a con contractor to be there to replace their water line so when they're there doing that have them do that out back as well and to upgrade that and maybe stop some of the issues that we've been having over in the recent years through there. And the timing thing, if we can do it now and get it before school starts, otherwise it's probably waiting till after the school year, right, Chris? That is correct. Is there money already in the budget to cover this then? We'd be using water and wastewater reserves, which, yeah, those have pretty healthy supplies, thankfully. Sounds like it's something important to do. Sort of while we have everything open. Kind of thing. Right, also good timing. Um, okay. how, how often do you get called over there during the school year for different things? Or am I thinking of a different spot? Isn't there one spot you get called to with some, some frequency? Oh, yeah, we're, we're over there all the time. It A um, little less in the summer just because flow is less. But we're guaranteed probably once a month to once every other month, depending upon what people flush, you know, if people are flushing what they're supposed to, they'd never have a problem. But it, unfortunately, when the pipes are degraded, they catch things that aren't supposed to be in the sewer line. Shocker. They find the most interesting <laughs> stuff, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um... I motion to authorize the project following the presentation of the project scope and review of the S is this way one? Yeah. The estimate of and review of the estimates provided. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Good luck, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for staying up late, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See you bye. Town clerk, right. treasurer, vacancy update. We, the ad hoc committee forums, had an interview the other day. The, those of us that were able to attend, so it was uh, you and I and Mary, you ended up being? Yep. Yeah. So now we could attend. So there's a candidate, we interviewed her. Um, and it's worth probably you guys having a conversation. We can get into names and stuff in the executive session if you want. Um, Is she the only one? So far. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the second one to apply, but we haven't made a determination. We could ready through that gotcha. source of okay. background. Okay. There was a more natural fit. Gotcha. Okay. Based on experience. So then the decision for you guys would be whether you want to, or how you'd like to do. If you want to do an interview, how would you like to schedule said interview? Do you want to try a special? Do you want to wait to the eighth? How do you want to handle it? Okay. If you do a special over the next 10 days, you can combine it with a helicopter purchase or whatever. I'll just slide that right in there. No one will know it and we'll be stunned. And I'll just get a picture while I'm on the beach. <laughs> this is yours. Yeah. Congratulations. Apply for a restricted landing area. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll talk about that in executive session and then make a decision or come out and make a motion if we want to do interviews or how we want to proceed. Sounds good. Um, town charter continuation. I have a draft going. just need to edit through it so it's something that sounds like English for most of it. Um, <laughs> trying to pick the most non-controversial elements to get started, and obviously we can armor it up from there. Um, and so some of that is trying to also include some ordinance adoption pieces that we've talked about. So that's the part I have to go back to edit, but 
some of the appointment language, some of the other basics, um, finding a structure for that. Because it's like everything we got going on right now, it's time and space. Yeah. Uh, the two yeah. elements. Yeah. Um, I haven't had a charter since what, 1790? It's 84. 84. Year I was born. So. You were born in 1784. Yeah, 17. 17. Oh. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, <laughs> no, but no, but we had a charter. Yeah, right? Oh, we had a charter. I don't know. No, we've never oh, had we a never. charter. I thought when I thought when the town uh, no. the town no. and the village came well, together that those was are articles of merger. Uh, well, I know, but I thought that they like just did the articles of merger and the starter. You never. Lots of towns don't have charters. I really want to modify the sign that says like charter. Input 2025 on it? Oh, well, that would stay because that's when old Benning Wentworth. That plus the Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Pick the fight with those oh. bastard <laughs> Disney workers. <laughs> we just put a sticker under it. Adopted. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> Rechartered. <laughs> Rechartered. Okay. Um, Harpa fun discussion. We put it on there, updated the table, and went back and looked. Um, we had a conversation about trucks, and the <coughs> motion was scheduled that was that we would or set up was that we would look at reserves first and then finance it. So we didn't have that in the ARPA mix at the time. So when we bought a couple of dump trucks in the grader back in April, I think that was um, was an element I thought I had missed. Um, those were discussed in a separate context. So you can see right here, just based on this rough estimate, there's about three. 79 left in total we have until the end of the calendar year to obligate so a, little, bless you, uh, a little more than a quarter of the original board and it has to be spent by 26 yep obligated and then appropriated by 26 so there are some mechanisms to stash it oh. essentially to consider it appropriated the towns have already embarked on or are considering when they get closer. Some towns have already gone on the bender and broke. Or their ARPA wallets are broke, I should say. So we got 10 days training. It's our money right there. I know. What's the helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> we at least get one like get a Magnum PI or something. <laughs> we get a fleet, like three different colors. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now we kind of have a general idea of what we have left. Yeah. Maybe we start a conversation next month about what. what I we think we need to have the conversation tonight. You think so? I do. Um. Because I think we need to peg some of this money as the first year or two of salary for somebody to help with all these grants oh, right. and the nightmare we got going with them. Yeah. And so it's about what, 110000 a year. That's what we're figuring for an all-in for, say, sort of our... By the time you pay the employment. insurance and yep. retirement and all those pieces. Family yeah. plan and current contribution rates, I think. Um, so would the idea be that we would ARPA fund it for the first year and then that it would self-fund a couple? Bit? I think you, you've set aside a pot of money for it and then you let them, because the, the amount of money coming back in to that is going to, it'll increase as the number of grants increase that we're getting admin right. from. Yeah. But there's going to be a full workload coming right into it. And so you want to set aside maybe two hundred and twenty thousand of it to fund the position, mm -hmm. with the understanding that that admin that comes back in goes to offset that position. Right. Right. So that might pay two and a half years or two and three quarters. Like, right. depends how long it takes for it to ramp up. But I would expect we're going to go through more of it in the first year than we will the second and third year. Yeah. But it should be then expended. It's obligated at that point, so we're covered. Yeah. Even if we take it out to the third or fourth year. I think as long as it's in our group budget too, I bet you that would. I wonder if that would pass the appropriation test. Yeah. So. If we, if we put it in a fiscal year budget, we're not going to spend it all. I mean, it all depends on the structure of the code, I guess. I, I would think you'd probably try to take, if you did 220, we might try to stretch it over three fiscal years, so you cover this year because it's sort of an extra 
and we walk it down a little bit in the next fiscal year. And we'll have mm -hmm. a little more data, hopefully, on what we can recover from admin. And then year three, you walk it down a little farther. And then in year four, we have a good sense of how much of it pays for itself and how much general fund is essentially left. Or I mean, we could assign this person to all the funds. I and mean, that's one of the things we don't normally do with any of our personnel costs. But we could start to assign those on a fund basis. Yeah. But we just have to bear with the right ratio of our. So 60% general fund, 20% highway. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. right. But I think we should allocate that money tonight and give you authorization to to go hire somebody because we don't need a budget approval for that. It's ARPA money. Mm -hmm. So we can authorize it like right now and send you on the recruiting. And really that like that position also will then help some of those other projects that were on that list to maybe come to life. You know what I mean? Like we talked about the sideways the side the side the sideways. The sidewalks. <laughs> Our sideways project, yeah. Getting late. <laughs> no. Just get more intelligent as the night goes on. Um, but like some, some of those things, like that person would be able to help actually make happen because there is grant money to do a lot of the work out there that, we, that they were, they kind of highlighted it. Highlight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Highlighted? Highlighted. Yep. I never knew which one. Identified. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's also a grant out there that would help pay for a new loader. So when we right. talk about charging highways some, there's, you know, grants for you know, water quality that'll pay for extra ditching and right. there's a variety of things for that too. And I don't know what's out there for water wastewater. I haven't really ever I haven't got on the C C list for much of those grants out there, so I'm just exciting. you know, I'll but let you enjoy could, that. Yeah, where they could help out might be if there's um, you know, opportunities to switch pump types, drive types. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the grants we're seeing a little bit. Mm. In addition to the bigger dollar mm. retreatment type system stuff. Mm. And they could go after some of this mitigation stuff too, yeah. right? Like, yeah. is the town eligible to get funding to replace the village garage, given where it's located, that would help us with some type of reconstruction project in the center to consolidate them all, or I don't know, but some more of that type of work mm -hmm. that would help us on our regular budget too, which would help show that the, the value of the position. Water wastewater too, a planning grant that would help us establish a 50 year capital plan that would send the lead service line inventory stuff and then we're able to start the budget for and go mm -hmm. about line replacement, for example. Mm -hmm. We're right. missing kind of that link of how much and in what order. Well, then uh, I'm We keep them busy, that's for sure. Uh, I know. And then we would split planning and zoning off as it's separate. Sorry. Yeah, that you was won me over. <laughs> okay, keep talking. Yes. That's yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'd make the two. Planning and zoning with special projects. With some special right, projects. So when it ebbs and flows, when it's on the low end, you could assign. Yep. Go research this policy or go help me with this or help, you know. Because I think there's going to be more capacity there than. Yeah. a full-time position just doing those two functions. I think there'll be times when they'll be taxed out, but mm -hmm. there'll be times when they got some... I mean, in terms of planning and zoning, and special full-time only for some parts yeah, of the year. If you got a big project other, coming other through the year, or... There might be extra capacity for them to yeah. do other projects. Where then they can step in and help with some of the policy research and rewrite or yeah. some of those type of tasks to take more stuff up. Trevor's plate. Yeah. Right. That's right. Okay. So I motion to allocate two hundred and twenty thousand dollars of ARPA funds towards the grants position for the town. Did I do did I do well? It's not even written anywhere. You are just rolling tonight. <laughs> <laughs> do we need any other provisions in that or is that to be spread over three years? Is, yeah, is that Wait. gonna is that gonna be the right sum of money to get us? Where we want to be. I think so, because we can even, because we're already into the fiscal year, we'll cheat down that one town a little bit here. And we have to find somebody right. and create, this, create a job description, scope of work, kind of thing, advertise. Um, so we're really probably talking 75 to 80 in year one. 
and do what we spend out of that. If we're able to hire by October, November, say. Okay. Or have them in house coming. Can you find that that's what Jeff would prefer to do over the plan? It's over the but he's got to kind of stay there until you find a replacement, so it may. <laughs> yeah, we would go live with this once we know. We'll be back. Well, some of it might be if he's interested in that, we might create it, figure out a deadline, you know, to move them over kind of thing based on hiring and then go hire for the other one. I do think the planning, zoning, special projects mix will be a nice one that's a more common combination. Right. Especially for folks looking to break into the land use planning and community development world, I guess. We'll even pay for their AICP certification mm. if they want. Wow. Sweeten the pot. Nice. <laughs> make maps for us. That's right. <laughs> Helicopter landing. It's my background. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. All right. So we have a motion. Did we get a second on that? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Are we doing any of the other? What about this website? You had been talking about that for a while, Trevor. I would really projects. love to do. Because that would also help yeah. reduce or increase capacity, right? Reduce burden on. If we could move a little bit toward, yeah, what we've called sort of the e commerce aspects of it, some of the website upgrades we've looked Was at. Was that a motion? Um, make a motion to. <laughs> allocate $55,000 towards website and e-commerce upgrades. Second. Is that, is that the number we figured? That yeah, was based on when we costed it out. Okay. When did, you, when did you cost it out? It's within the last year to year and a half, so it might be a little bit. We, but we rounded up a little bit. Like it was like 52 and change, so. Um, so I have a question before I vote. Um, is there a grant money out there that this other person that we just voted to hire for a website? For, yeah, there hasn't been historically. Okay. Okay. The grant money that's been out there for websites has been like the vibe, yeah. travel, tourism, marketing based, as opposed to. And we can't like hijack off. We're not like we can't like somehow be the same website and have like a tab off to the side of like government that would link to all those things. Does that make it too messy? I think it would be a little messy, okay. but some of the changes in the open meeting law and some of the ways we want to not segregate, but offer payment modules and stuff, it, it's a little bit cleaner to have it. Separate. Yeah, and then have some more direct linkage back to the vibe, yep. for example. Okay. Okay, I'm ready to vote. Thank you. Ready? I'm ready. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah, that leaves you with $104,000. Well, but we might also have some, I mean, we don't have exact numbers on all this stuff, right? Yeah. Because we don't have the exact might. emergency management number, and you may end up a little higher on that one. And so we'll leave the rest for a later day. I think that's like a contingency, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. 6% contingency or whatever it works out to be. No, that's the admin fee. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Manager's report. Uh, you want a lengthy one given the hour? Or? Um, yeah, just give us the new and excited. The end of the day tomorrow, I'm gone for cruisers. <laughs> you can ride in a helicopter, Scott. Um, we'll pay for the flight lessons. <laughs> it, uh, I'll be gone as of tomorrow at the end of the day through August 5th on um, vacation. I'll generally be reachable, but Wednesday night probably not. Be in a very loud venue. Have fun. Yes. <laughs> Turn on your phone. You can watch them, but if you do need something, so I'll send an email out to that effect. Well, I don't have a life, so if anybody needs anything, I'll be around. <laughs> for the most part. So if your staff needs some guidance or have a light question, they don't need to bother you. Okay. You can send them my way. 
I think they bother me because they miss me. At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> it's a warm and fuzzy <laughs> feeling, but I got a feeling you're going to get some of those. So here, <coughs> be good. I think the highway super will call me, but mostly because he's wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll oh, good. Easement yeah. discussion. What's that? Easement discussion. Oh, that's on the 8th. We're scheduled. That's when okay. the folks, Liz and Meg and one other thing, I think, is a third. So that should cover all the organizations involved in that conversation. Okay. Um, so going back up to committees and commission appointments, mm -hmm. um, Dave has been put forward for the fire services committee. And um, I don't know if we wanted to talk some more before you say yes. You had the <clears throat> interview with the firemen, right? They chatted with you. But um, do we want to set some direction on that committee? We've got a few opportunities. We have a few opportunities coming, their personnel discussions. So I don't know if we want to invite Dave into executive session to talk about some of the personnel changes that are coming and direction. Give it if they, because generally the your appointment would then chair that committee. Did they fill you in on that part? Yes. And kind of set the direction and go for the you know the goals and what has to be achieved and whatever. I'm pretty vague on um, what my responsibilities would definitely be beyond. The only thing that was very clear was that I've been overseeing all the um, the rural hydrant program. It's a grant program yeah. and dry hydrants put in. And then mm -hmm. being a liaison to the select board. But um, my question to you is, is who am I really working for? <coughs> and what my role truly is in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, and so a lot of these committees, we've taken a step back and tried to redo the charge so it's clear. Your your position in that committee is a little bit different because it's in that articles of merger. And so some of it comes from that, but it's also grown into um, having a role as a select board committee too. So you're gonna, you get both sides of it. Okay. So I think you have the, I think the member at large, it chairs it, and it's the, the fire departments are all members. That's how I am. And they, you know, talk about, I think that committee, like, sets the rates they're, they're that pay they rates get paid. Any, my understanding is any um, issue that comes up to any individual department or group of departments, they try to bring it up together to try to come to some resolution. Yeah. They usually um, review like the spec on equipment, trucks, that kind of stuff in there too. But um, I don't have my articles of merger with me. That talks about that committee in it and some of what's there. <coughs> but I, I think it's a bigger top, it's got a bigger assignment too. Um, and you would probably benefit from knowing some of the personnel changes or potential changes coming before you go in there. So um, what I was wondering is if we should invite Dave into executive session and talk about some of the personnel things on so yeah, given what and we've changes heard. and Coming. whatnot so he has a much better idea of what he's signing on to before he before he wants us to appoint him because I yeah. mean it um yep so just in the motion you include to include him Adam okay is everybody comfortable with that okay we'll invite Judy too so she can keep him company okay <laughs> um, I get to say do no, no. It's a really big deal. <laughs> so we need to find that we need to go so, and yeah. then go. Yeah. So it's the two motion. And then when you enter, that's when you say to include our esteemed guests. Okay. 
Um, I motion uh, to find that executive session is necessary and prudent, and that premature general public knowledge would place the town at a disadvantage. Second. All those Thank in you. favor? Aye. 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 I'm all set. Motion carries. <laughs> uh, I motion to enter executive session pursuant to. Do I have to read all those letters? <laughs> One BSA. What does that thing mean, statute? Sec section, section 313. Section. Oh, God. 313A1. Just do as proposed. As proposed. <laughs> Including inviting. Including David inviting and David and Judy. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.